What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast, which is brought to you by Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. I just crossed over 2,000 miles on this trip in the new Carbon Outlaw Bandit, and the upgrades to this classic helmet design are just what I needed to make it my helmet for 2024. The classic Outlaw style, combined with a few new key features, like the new visor detents, which allow you to ride with the visor up at higher speeds, you can check out this helmet and all the other available models and finishes at SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com and don't forget to give them a follow on Instagram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. On today's episode, I sit down with the guys who rode with me from Texas to Southern California for the Born Free 15 show. Jake, who you've heard many times on the podcast during the Whiskey Boys and other episodes, Matt Darden, who is his first time being on the show, and Dwayne from El Paso, which is also his first time being on the show. We talk about the ride and the experiences from our great state of Texas all the way out here to California. So let's get into this episode with the homies on the way to Born Free, California. Hey guys, you ready to let the dogs out? Fast Life Podcast. I was whiskey for a long time. Do I get so horny when I drink tequila? <laughs> <laughs> I love when my wife drinks it. It's like, okay, we doing this? <laughs> well, hey, cheers. 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 It's been a good ride. First leg of this trip for, right. for me with you guys. And, you know. That's like, so thinking about that. Dwayne, so, who never yeah. committed to being with us the whole time, but it's turned out to just. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Can't get and rid of I have of. a friend somewhere that people are like, sure, you got a friend there. <laughs> I didn't even see him. I thought, no, he probably didn't even come. He probably just no. He did. I saw pounds. some pictures. He's going to Pomona uh, swap meet in the morning. So now he's oh yeah, that is Pomona. So now he's left to go to Pomona. <clears throat> is it like a biker swap meet only, or just a general swap meet? You probably know more. I about think they it, do but... a swap meet like every month there. Oh yeah, okay. It's, it's yeah, they apparently got... it's like big. Like they'll be like build bikes for sale, but it's a lot of uh, like everything. Auto cars too. Yeah. Every it's it's not like a swap meet. I've Dude. only seen pictures and it's pretty. I feel like the swap meets that do like once a month are way better because San Diego had one Saturday and Sunday like every week if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. and it was cool because you could get whatever you wanted there. But yeah. yeah, I'm getting to the point where I want to go to swap meets because like shit I'm actually looking for is turning out to be older it's, stuff now. Especially if you're in the FXR chopper scene. Dude, I'm about to go full chopper, bro. You are Evo. I'm pulling. Well, I'm gonna pull the Evo out of that uh, RT I picked up and try to build a chopper out of it. Really? So yeah, it'll probably. I mean, because that's not gonna be that hard. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But and not that expensive either. But I'm excited about that. But uh, yeah. So I mean, fuck, dude. It's it's kind of crazy that we're all looking forward to this trip for so long, and then it just happens, and all of a sudden now you're on the last night in California. You know? Yeah, it's wild. It's uh. I mean the, the planning of this, the the getting ready for it. Uh, it felt like it took forever to get to the point of like when we were gonna leave, and it's it took a we took a long route to get here, and we got here, and now it's like over like that. Yep. It's yep. It's, it's been it's been a good trip, but uh, it's been uh, it's it's just always wild how that works out. This is not your first long trip. I mean, mm-hmm. you did Florida. That Sturgis. Time. And the Sturgis. And then Milwaukee. Oh, yeah, you did fly up there and pick it when you picked the ST, right? Yep. Yep. Um, you've done, you're everywhere. Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne, travel. <Dwayne. laughs> Dwayne. Yeah, but this was uh, was not my typical route that I would have gone. So I am glad that I came with you guys because. <clears throat> would you have done any of those roads ever? No probably? way. I would have. Normally, what I do is blast through there. I mean, lately, that's why mm. I've been riding a little bit more on my own because. Mm-hmm. Seems like everybody else, but you know, time constraints, and so I got to get there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it was nice to take three days to do an, a one day trip. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to pull. Well, I mean, if you you could blast to Born Free and just get out here and just you know, kind of like what Cano did, you know, Cano. Well, that's what I pretty did much, for Chopper Fest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the buddy that I was supposed to come with, he. Uh, him and I were coming to Chopper Fest. He had tickets, everything, and then he says, uh, and so I tell all my California buddies, hey, I'm going to be out there for Chopper Fest, and then he's like, man, I can't go. I'm like, what? 
<laughs> right. I just told you guys, not like I... Same guy this trip. Huh? Same was, guy? Yeah. I'm beginning no. to think this guy doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, right? And he, uh, he's like, but take the ticket. So I rode all the way out here by myself and, and yeah, it just sucks. Just blast. But the weather's not as bad as... Yeah. Yeah. True. I don't mind the solo stuff, but you you really got to like take the opportunity to when you get to ride with people, mm-hmm. especially when you're doing longer excursions and stuff like that. But because I mean, if I would have blasted everybody myself, this trip would looked a lot different. You know, I probably would have mm-hmm. went and saw some more people, did some more stuff. But then again, I would have kind of not had the spontaneity that we kind of all created by, you know, I would have been making all the decisions of my own, right? Because yeah. I'm alone, but. Yep. Then when you have the group, it's like, well, hey, is y'all want to do hibachi? Or do right. y'all, you know what I mean? And now we can't eat yeah. seafood because of Dwayne. <laughs> 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 so it just changes the dynamic. And sometimes it's for the better because it makes you do something you don't think that you definitely probably wouldn't have done otherwise, yeah. you know? No, I didn't know some of these roads even existed. I mean, I've been. So it was nice. It was, uh, I was, uh, <clears throat> it was a good trip. Now I'm like thinking this I-10 trip is going to be boring as hell. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's really no way you can make that fun, though. Uh-uh. That's a boring road. I mean, you could cut off in some spots, and but, you know, you're seeing the same thing, but on slower roads, mm-hmm. basically. But, so, yeah, we kicked off this trip. Um, you know, Jake and uh, Matt here uh, out of Dallas, we met up just outside of Dallas in Decatur and, Pretty much beelined it to Albuquerque to catch the T Bar Tuesdays with the performance. New Mexico is it New Mexico performance? Yeah, it's like they. It's weird. They have like a their real page is like Albuquerque Rippers, I think. But uh, then it's like New Mexico performance or something like that. I they, don't know. They need they need to work that out. Yeah, they need to yeah. get more consistent with that. They need to put some names in a hat and choose one. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Right. And they just need to drop Albuquerque Rippers at the end of the day. Yeah, that that I don't know. Whatever, that's them. They, they yeah. can they can work out their uh, Hunger Games over there, you right. know. But right. that bike night was actually pretty fun, man. All it those was, guys were awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of bikes there. There are yeah. a lot of people. It it, yeah. it really did have kind of like our vibe, our bike night vibe. It as is. far as like it did. everybody hanging out, happy to see each other, you know, busting a little bit of balls, yeah. you know. But yeah, I mean, the bar was chilled. The food was, dude. Everything we ate was right. good. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. I think I bowl had chili. Beans. I had a bowl of beans. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That shit was fire, though. Yeah. Hey, and you had green chili queso and didn't blow out your asshole. Yeah. Yeah. I. I really. I really played Russian roulette or fucking roulette with the with the food I ate there, and I was yeah. pretty solid. Yeah. So. Um, well, I'm stoked. I met those New Mexico guys because yeah, Mike. Mike. Yeah. He. Uh, he did a because I left last minute. He did a service on my bike and. Man, I've never shift gear so smoothly. I told him, "What's the recipe, man?" He just yeah, they had great hospitality. Yeah, but that garage was awesome too. The tell them about how like when as soon as you posted the bike up on the lift. Oh like, yeah, I think I got almost thirty messages from people uh, trying to thirty. Say, was it that many? Yeah, it was like. Uh, well, and it's hard to really tell, but I could tell by the people that don't message me were. Uh, Hey, is everything all right? And it's really they just like want to know that turbo is not reliable, and they're like, "I knew that shit was gonna break down." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm like, "Yeah, everything's fine," <clears throat> but they see it on the lift, and yeah, they want yeah. it to be bad. Yeah, yeah. they want it to be. Uh, they're like, I don't know. People love. They're them. they're happy for me, but then they're secretly like, uh, yeah, yeah. Nobody thinks you can ride those things cross country. So, well, I mean, the the green bike has proven itself time and time again. I mean, one time it didn't, but yeah, you just got to put a motor in every once in a while. But that's, <laughs> but that wasn't the turbo; that was a lifter, right? Yeah. yeah. Between you and Abe, I mean, you're like the poster children of freaking uh, <clears throat> miles on turbo. Poster children of doing a shitload of oil changes <laughs> every eighteen hundred miles or so. so. Is it really that quick? Two thousand. Really. Uh, that's like do, you better do it before you go home. I became a no. That's why I did an Albuquerque. I uh, yeah. That's why I became an Amazon dealer just to keep up on my own. But <laughs> now I'm not. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna use that anymore. But would you use at the at his shop, Belray? No, Lucas. Lucas. Fucking 
O'Reilly shit. Dude, I, I, I don't I don't know why. I, or I don't know where, where he got it, but... Lucas actually, it's generally pretty good, isn't it? Well, I, I don't know about the oil. I've tried mm. literally every single thing. When my motor blew up once, I think it had Bell Ray or Redline, oh, whatever's the on. most expensive. Yeah, so yeah, I don't... Same on it. I love Bell Ray. Yeah. Mm. Uh, everybody has... It's like you ask five people, you get five different answers, and I've tried them all. I cannot I, When I was a kid, my, my friends, the dude Chris, his dad said something. Because he had like an old car that he bought brand new and he put the same exact brand of oil, same everything in it the entire time. And that fucking car, I think it's probably still running today. <laughs> and um, to me, uh, that always stuck with me. It, it, I mean, there there might be some validity to it or not, or, or not, but it's, I so I try to like pick an oil for a bike mm-hmm. and just stick with that forever. Yeah. And, um, and so what is your choice? Bell Ray's been the one. I used to do... Well, I would have chosen a cheaper one. Good grief! I used yeah. to do um, I used to do a mobile one, the yeah. mobile one V twin, because you can get that at Walmart and. Uh, yeah. That's what Trash suggests. Yeah, is something that you can get all the time yeah, anywhere. Yeah. Didn't you say one time like we shouldn't be running synthetic? Or who, that's oh, how you know, No, uh, they say don't run synthetic in your primary. Oh, okay. You know, mm. but I, I'm not the dude to ask about like synthetic in the motor or not, but I. I don't know, man. It's kind of like whatever. You're yeah. kind of at the mercy of whoever's the most knowledgeable about that in your circle and just kind of go. And I'm sure to that point, you're, you ask 50 people, you're going to get 50 different What answers. do you put in the turbo? Um, turbo juice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this. <laughs> so, Is that like blinker fluid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go-go juice. No, I, I've literally, so I've tried everything when I had my uh, street glide turbo. Uh, you know, it was black and and or, and red in it, and so I was on this red primary kick, just so you could see the red going mm. on in there. And so I tried all of them, including uh, <clears throat> um, ATF. Mm-hmm. Um, stayed the reddest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even the red line. Yeah. It gets black after about two days. Mm. I mean, it has a hint of red, but not like ATF, which was like. Yeah, bright red. I always thought that was weird. You can either use the thickest oil known to man in that thing or automatic transmission fluid. It's like the, the viscosity is not even in the same ballpark. Mm-hmm. So it was always weird. But no, I've tried all of them. I cannot tell a difference with the, it and not this bike, but the other ones I've had digital dipsticks to check the oil, everything. I can't tell a difference of, mm-hmm. but that's just me. Yeah, I don't know. I like, but I can tell you, after two thousand miles, you change turbo oil. It's not very clear. It's pretty dark already. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's That's like crazy. it's like eight thousand. I don't know. It's it probably it's gets a lot harder going through because uh, it's going through the turbo as well. You know, that oil. You know, that drain fluid and that uh, feed line it goes into it. But uh, I don't know how true it is. You could. I mean, what does the stock oil change? Five thousand. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so really, even, the I best even, part is, is you don't even know. <laughs> you just run turbo. Yes. <laughs> There's 87 octane. I don't know what the, who uses that. <clears throat> what do you you have to run it on 93 all the time or what? Um, 91 we is 91. Everywhere yeah. We stop. No, I don't, we can't hardly even get that in El Paso. It's really? 91. There's one gas station that has 93. I tell a couple of people in town. There's only one that has it. Yeah, do you ever feel a difference though? Well, I don't know. I've never. Uh, oh, that's there's a weird been, There's been a couple of back roads. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> don't eat. You don't eat uh, high end restaurants, but you don't. You yeah. Never. But when it comes to gas, I uh, push a little bit of the. You feed gas your bike out. better than you feed yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, I squeeze a little bit of gas out just in case there's some eighty six in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two gallons on the ground every time before you start. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, uh, yeah, this comes out of the same fucking thing, man. <laughs> yeah, to think about it. I didn't think about that. Yeah. For that. Comes yeah, out of the, clear the line a little yeah, bit. Yeah, clear the line. Get that cheap shit out. <laughs> no, in my car. <laughs> in my car, I use the cheapest shit. Actually, I used to have one of those flex fuel vehicles. Mm. And because there's about one or two gas stations that have in El Paso that have that. Um, E85. Mm. I thought all those years I thought it was 85 octane. <laughs> and I just know it was cheaper. 
Fuck, I, don't, I wasn't using it for the E85. I was using it because it was cheaper than regular gas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're realizing the only thing you spend money on is motorcycles. Well, uh, so, yeah. but to that point, though, like we've we've had conversations recently about this. Where, Everybody's got a vice. Where when you think about what that line holds and then like where the actual, like the, the tanks down below. And so if someone came up and did 86 or whatever before you and with a motorcycle tank of only five or six gallons, like how much of that actually is mm. premium fuel because what's in the lines and, and that type of thing. Like I'll bet you at least a gallon is... Mm. So actually, I think it makes more sense with the turbos or I don't know about a supercharger because so I used to have uh, I used to run these headphones in my bike with the music, mm -hmm. but they they're like they inject this stuff in your ear and it makes a headphone. So it's mm -hmm. like there's no road noise, but you don't hear anything but the music. And when I first got the turbo, they're like, you want to make sure you can hear that turbo if uh, it starts pinging. And they start using words like detonation. And I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will like ping pop a mm -hmm. little bit. Like, uh, and so I'm like, all right, I ain't using those anymore. I'll switch to Cardo. Mm -hmm. So I kind of hear a little both because you want to hear it. And, and uh, <clears throat> but when the last one blew, I didn't hear any pinging. Well, I'll, so. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, riding behind you, uh, sometimes I'm like, Cause I'll hear your your whine a little bit, and but I'm like thinking it's my bike, and yeah. I'm like, what I've the done fuck the is? Exact I'm like, what's going on here? here? I'm like, you why have the whine, bike? but you have like a like it's almost like something's like you can hear that hamster. <sighs> yeah, pretty it's like, much. It's like the, the wheel, like the card in a bike tire, like like the that rhythm anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. I'm I'm kind of immune to it because I'm always having the music on, and mm -hmm. I don't hear it enough. How do you listen to music that much? Like you just listen to the same shit over again? Like yeah, I just have playlist? a playlist and uh, um, that's just my. Do you have like different genres of playlists? No, I I, I have this uh, one. So back when I had uh, some audio on this bike, mm -hmm. this guy was telling me like you know you gotta pay for Spotify because you yeah. can hit this thing to say high quality music only. Like some of the high quality also. Well, so high flute and shit again. No, not nah. it's uh it's uh the 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 music, you know, the quality of of the the sound and the speakers. Oh, yeah. Cuz he was like a audio well, that, competition. You don't, you don't get the uh you don't have to deal with the commercials, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, not not so much that is uh is more of the there could be one song that you pick and it's saying only play the songs with the highest uh mm. download quality. And and so I have this list that's just, I don't know, it's just, it's rock and it's uh, rap and everything. Um, but it, why I like to use it is when I go through dead spots, it still plays. Yeah, yeah. I don't, man, I don't really listen to much, man. Like it's, really? uh, I don't know. I like, I like to, I, I don't know. I, I listen to so much music and podcasts as it is when I work because I'm alone all day long. That when I get on a bike, that's like my time to fucking like hear nothing, you know. Well, really, why I also do it is I'm I always have the GPS ways on telling oh, me yeah. if there's cops and potholes and shit. And that's uh, gotta be annoying. No, I just I feel you're weird like without it. The, you're like in that part of the song, and then that chick comes in. Oh yeah, does it's it cut the music out? You say my ass so many times though. I love that chick. <laughs> <laughs> So there's been so much. Is it a now, British accent? What is it? Uh, I don't know. I've switched it up a couple times, but I'm sticking with. Uh, Got to get away from the Cookie Monster. Yeah, I'll never do that again. <laughs> 80s aerobics instructor is one option. I won't put it in. They used to have a Samuel L. Jackson option. That was a good one. The problem with those is they start trying to put the little joke spin on it, and I'm like, dude, tell me when is the next turn? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's crazy, man. So after we, you know, did Albuquerque, we, we busted ass and uh, made a, we were supposed to go to Miami Valley, but then we pulled an audible because I had never ridden through Sedona, Prescott and Jerome yeah. and all that stuff. And so it made sense to go try to do something new on this trip. And you know what I mean? And yep. to be honest with you, we, the last part of the first day, right before we got into Albuquerque, we had a stretch of like. It's hot. Uh, undesirable weather. But yeah, it, it, yeah. to be honest with you, like in hindsight, we were kind of complaining about 
the inevitability of the rest of the trip, right? True. Yep. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, we had one leg of like, un, like this sucks. And it was really only about an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't it was like, and no, no part of that was I, it was hot. It was discomforting, but I was ne- like, never was I was like, I can't take this anymore. Yeah. What else can I say about the Thunder Max products and the team behind them? I have run the Thunder Max tuners on my fuel injected Harleys years before I met the men behind the brand. Now for the last five years, Thunder Max has not only supported our podcast, but have been a big supporter of everything from small events to the biggest rallies across America. For those of you who are not familiar with the Thunder Max tuners, they replaced your fuel injected Harley ECM and O2 sensors with their proprietary ECM module and wideband O2 sensors. This allows your computer to auto-tune itself based on the readings from those wideband O2 sensors. Adding a new exhaust cam or big bore kit has never been easier with the Thundermax units eliminating the need for dyno tuning and its reoccurring costs. To learn more about their products, visit thunder-max.com. If you decide to make a purchase, remember to use the Fast Life offer code at checkout to save 10% on your order. Finally, don't forget to follow the team on Instagram at Thundermax EFI. Having a brand like Arlen S support the Fast Life podcast is absolutely surreal. Decades before I fell in love with motorcycles, the Ness brand was right there innovating and inspiring generation after generation. The brand's long-standing history and dedication to the custom motorcycle industry is truly remarkable. I have been fortunate enough to use many of their products on my Rogue Glide, Lowrider ST, and FXR Chopper over these past few years. I love their four and six piston brake calipers, wheels, and bagger mid controls, and I use Arlen S air cleaners on all my bikes. And even after thousands of miles, the parts still look and feel new. If you're interested in learning more about the Arlen S motorcycle products, head on over to arlenss.com where you can find out more information and see their vast catalog. And for our listeners, if you drop the Fast Life 10 offer code at checkout, you're going to save yourself 10% on your order. And don't forget to give these guys a follow on Instagram at Arlen S Motorcycles to stay up to date with all the happenings around the brand. Now let's get back to the show. So I was going to borderline. Uh, <laughs> I kept lifting up the visor and putting it back down. Like, what's the Lake Havasu? We're talking about on the way to Albuquerque. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. You're, you're, I think you meant to on the way to Havasu. Good <laughs> grief. There, there was a moment of that where I was like, that last 30 minutes, I was like, fuck, I don't know if I could do much more of this. Yeah, dude, it's gnarly, man. But that's that's like the thing about like this trip stuff. And I, I get so worked, not worked up, but I feel like I'm like, look, we got to, you know, let's not push it till six. Let's, let's get up early as possible. Get through this desert. Cause it is fucking gnarly. Mm-hmm. And, um, I remember one year, the year that we did it on the FXR a long time ago, we were going through 115 everywhere. Mm-hmm. We stayed in Monument Valley and then we were trying to make it to basically, uh, born free after that, like long ass day. It was like 700 miles or something like that. 800 miles. Right. And shit, as soon as we hit needles, it was like 115 going through the whole thing. Yeah, it was. I <laughs> was tough. We selfie in here. <laughs> there we go. But no, it was, it was cool because like I said, having, you know, Matt, this is your first time like going on a long trip. Like what yeah. made you want to do a, a bigger trip like this? Well, I mean, when I started riding, I was like, okay, what's. I always get into something with like kind of like a goal in mind and one of them was like i want to do all four corners of the u.s in three years mm-hmm. so good goal this this is one of them i'm going to go down to san diego see the family and then hit the corner down there and then um but i also just kind of like i was like i'm not gonna have this free time much longer so mm-hmm. it's like why not take advantage of it and go check out go do this with you guys i mean you guys were gracious enough to throw the invite and i was like dude i'm definitely down and hop on it and uh it was really cool especially seeing we got to see roads that i had driven before in a car never Mm -hmm. ridden and so i was like that that was like a real cool part of it for me because i've always been like man this be great on a motorcycle Mm -hmm. and i didn't get to do it so now that i got to do it it was cool well what's neat too is you mentioned like you had only like ridden the mountains one time before this yeah. And, I mean, you kept up well and, and I would say did a great job. So, like, what's your take on riding the mountains, more technical, maybe a little bit more speed than you're used to? Just finding the right gear, I think, was, like, <laughs> the right thing at first. Like, 
just getting in the right gear made it a lot easier. I mean, there's times like, ooh, it came a little hot here, you know? Yeah. But it was really fun just, like, being able to watch, try and mimic, try and copy. I'm always someone that, like, tries to get better at things. So I'm just yeah. like, like, oh, like, I can take this better doing this. And I'll see someone do something, and I'm like, oh, I'll do that. And then, you know, so it was just it was just a really good time to, to get to experience that. And, like, the 89A row, like, we've talked about, it, I think, like, 10 times since, like, just was so fun. That was yeah. the best. That down that after we left Prescott with that eighty nine road down was just perfect morning, you know, nobody on the road really. And um, you know, with like hitting the corners and stuff like that, like you wanna find a groove to where you're not choppy. Because yeah. mm-hmm. every time you're chopping on and off the throttle, yeah. it, it like throws the weight distribution mm-hmm. off. Yeah. And so when you're in corners and stuff or about to enter and exit corners, it throws off the whole thing. Yeah. You know, so it's like a smoothness in, smoothness out. Um, smooth as fast smooth as fast smooth as fast yeah. yeah and you know then trying to judge the corners right to get like we were talking about mm-hmm. at lunch or dinner one night about finding those apexes and trying to kind of get them at the right timing and, and yeah. whatnot you know yeah. and that, what was good about that road is that it was so smooth you didn't feel like there was like any kind of debris yeah, yeah. which is surprising that. on that road I was surprised That's you it. know not to skip ahead but I think we were doing Big Bear Anytime you got close to the center line, they had those dips. I mm-hmm. know, I hate that, that would shit. Throw that that would oh, kind of yeah. throw your bike off the off yeah. the that smoothness thing we were just talking about. So, yeah, but that road just kind of lends itself to like riders, which I think they they have to take in consideration because it it is like, from my knowledge, the number one riding road in probably Arizona for for motorcycles. Oh yeah, and so it's the best one I've ridden, and I've ridden yeah. pace and all that stuff too. So it's like they, I assume they take a little consideration. Well, I mean, you saw every car on there knew to get, get off the road as soon as they saw a motorcycle, even yeah. government vehicles. Except <laughs> for that one freaking <laughs> yeah. service truck that was, that was like trying oh, to race Jerome. us. Yeah. Was yeah. that Jerome? Was that the old guy? Okay. That I think like... his bike was in the shop and he was like, <laughs> fuck it, I'm riding with him. <laughs> yeah, that dude was ripping. <laughs> you guys want to know the pace? <laughs> Another thing that I hated too, though, on 45, I think it was between Al- when Albuquerque and uh, Flagstaff, uh, those like those little uh, divots in the center lines yeah. too. Like yeah. so, like th- we had some times of like some pretty big wind, and I kept like getting pulled into those things, and like yeah, man. I want to say it's been. I mean, I drove ten in January on the way home, but I've you know every every time that I've ridden it. I feel like 10 is a much more well man like mm-hmm. uh taking care of highway because yeah. 40 was just disgusting. Yeah. There was think, a, there was a stretch that was terrible. Like dude, really it was, terrible. It, it was shitty when we crossed in from New Mexico, which believe it or but not. But I think that's a New Mexico thing because But right I felt as, like New Mexico was smooth and we were leaving Albuquerque. It, yeah. Well, well, but they still have those. I know right as soon as you leave El Paso on I-10 and then it gets to what 25, mm-hmm. they have those because where I live, that's where we do a lot of high speed, te- you know, see how far we can max it out. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you got to switch lanes, man, it will just throw you off. I've seen so many wobbles with buddies mm-hmm. hitting those things. Um, well, I'm just saying the road quality as a whole, you know, yeah. like. Yeah. Like through Albuquerque, 40 was actually not that great. But once you got out of Albuquerque, okay. it got super smooth. And there was the Arizona side. But then once you got into Arizona, it was like. Probably the worst interstate I've but ever. But the ridden. west side was definitely the worst compared oh, yeah. to the east Over, side. Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't really ride. We we cut down at, at Flagstaff, so we didn't really get like Williams and all that stuff. You know. Yeah. Exactly. But but like past that towards the the Kingman area area, like bro, that's some of the worst roads. Kingman I think I've to seen. fucking the exit for Havasu. <laughs> that fucking road can just needs to go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that I, was I, bad. And it did. You did see the sign, right? Rough road ahead. Yeah, they weren't lying. <laughs> and I was like, we'll see, but I, I wasn't expecting that. Right? I literally, it's just a rough stretch. Yeah. And, I, we, and we were all like trying to ride like side by side. And we somebody should have threw up a finger and be like, look, this is, we're going to split down the middle because. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to say in a groove of like one of the tire tracks, just assuming that it mm. wasn't. I took a lump there. And I think you caught the same one. Yeah. And we both went through it. And I, was I, like, I literally I watched I was you on. basically like fucking Bronco, you're. Yeah, yeah. FXR. I think I one. caught the same one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, around a semi. Yeah. Well, I, I I spent a lot of time behind you, Jake, and you were ripping those corners with that tour pack. I would see it going. I was like, dude, I've ridden with a tour pack, and that ain't. That's like having a wind sail sometimes. Yeah. Oh, it sucked. 
That's all. But you were doing good, man. Yeah. I was like, I can't believe. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But it, th- there was a moment where I had. So it basically, when especially when you're in a turn that has like a little bit of wave to it, um, with that type of a tour pack, man, like that that wobble gets so bad. Mm-hmm. And there was one moment where I don't remember where we were at, but we were in a, a decent little long fast uh, curve. But that curve happened to have like a little bit of yeah. um, waves to it. was on the way to Havasu, like and after Wickenburg. I mean, there was like a that. moment where I was like seriously doing like freaking. I feel like I, I saw you do a little bit of that either in Big Bear or on the way up or on the way down. I, I probably for sure did. I mean, there was been. I think it's because we kept going in between riding staggered to side by side. And, and when we're hitting the corner. No, we rode staggered the whole time. You kept oh. riding side by side. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I'm like, you know, I've never ridden long distance with, uh, I was like, I don't know what He's the uh, fast guy. life boys are going to do. He saw and this fucking... guy's got no fucking mirrors. And I'm like, dude, I want to make sure you can see me. <laughs> Still, you ain't passing. Don't be running into my bike with that FXR. <laughs> With, with Jace, though, you like he'll, he'll especially on the interstate, uh, he'll just look with his helmet. So when he's about to yeah. like move, so like he he won't um, do hand signals most of the time. Just but once you see him like look, yeah, one I way, try to change lanes when he does that. Like you, yeah, like when you ride with people a lot, you start to notice their body language when they're going to make yeah, lane right. changes or whatever, speed up, mm-hmm. slow down, whatever. I noticed that like the last two days yeah we all start like today like when we're changing lanes i was already in the lane because i knew you're gonna come yeah. over and so start see walking that, I, no and i know and it's just i haven't had enough because see when you're see time with you guys if you're right next to me like usually like i'm pretty I'm, i have good spatial awareness so i'm usually aware and i can like tell okay even like especially if it's like night or whatever i know your headlights how far i can kind of judge a little bit how far away depending on how bright it is next to me or on the car in front of me, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Even like in the daytime, you know, especially like y'all shit, all those fucking yeah. goddamn well, to that point, lights. I was actually thinking about this. I'm glad you don't have mirrors because, you know, there's some angles that like that yeah. shit can just fucking be blasting yeah. off your, the reflection of your mirrors. I, I mean, there's a, I would, it'd be nice to have mirrors. Trust me. I'm not like yeah. anti mirror, but that bike is supposed to look cool. And then, no, that bike shouldn't have it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It looks too clean. I don't know. That. I saw that chopper where he had mirrors on the foot pegs, and I was <laughs> yeah. like, that could be pretty good. That's not going to last long. I did see some, uh, uh, maybe we'll get you some of those Timu gloves that have the mirrors on, on the, the side. On the, <laughs> on, the, on the gloves? Just like gloves. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, like, like I, I thought about putting the mirror, like doing like one mirror on the mm-hmm. left that has just the bottom. Um, but I don't know, man. Fuck it. Yeah. I guess I, I see it. I want you to hang the uh, the cross necklace off of it too. Oh while, yeah, while you're at it. Yeah, when no, you roll the, into El Paso. <laughs> 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 What's it? No, what is the uh, the the rosary or some shit like that? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. You gotta have that on there to get through El Paso. <laughs> get it, <a> fucking <laughs> pay respects to the uh, to the wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. You know, we going through like pacing and stuff. Like I'd always wanted to do it. I think I was telling you guys, it's it's just like living in Texas, going to California a lot. That's not on the way at all. Yeah, pacing's you a know? hard one. And 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 honestly, it kind of could be like the way we did it if we would have mm-hmm. went from forty through Sedona, Jerome, Payson, uh, no Prescott. Sorry, I'm tripping. Flags. I get I get, yeah. them, I get them mixed up. Yeah, um, Prescott. And then just drop down to the 10 and go across. Like, that's, like, completely doable, but I just don't think about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't ever think about doing that. And I don't. Well, I would. I only thought about it because I live there. And yeah. I have done that, like, area. Yeah, you know, like, every single one of these towns. And I'm like, man. I don't... <laughs> well, dude, I drove 50, 60,000 miles a year. Arizona is Phoenix and Tucson, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I've been to uh, Sedona and Flagstaff. I did that, yeah. that, that run. Yeah. But. Um, but not or in Payson, but it was full rain. I mean, oh, yeah. two of the guys that were riding with us, their their stereos went out. Um, <laughs> really, <clears throat> like that bad, just pouring rain. How like, good? How good did it feel in Flagstaff? And then, like as we kept going down, like it just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Yeah, dude, we, we got yeah. teased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah, it was like perfect in Flagstaff, and then it definitely. We were thinking it was going to be cooler, and then fucking down in Sedona, it was just like the traffic, and then I was surprising. Yeah, yeah. 
I expected it to be cooler in Sedona. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it pretty there. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is freaking pretty there. And I could, I, I just don't like, I, when I go places on the bike and stuff, I want to kind of be away from yeah. the crowd. And it's crazy much. how much like certain areas that are like more or less national parks or areas are just, oh, there are people everywhere. It's like, I came to nature for nature, not not fucking the mall or city or Walmart, you know what I mean? Right. We also drove through on a holiday, which I didn't realize at first. Nobody celebrates that. <laughs> <laughs> but people had the time off. Oh, yeah. 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 West. They're not celebrating. Yeah. Thank you, June 19th. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you could have left that out so it wouldn't sound like I'm a racist. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? I don't even know what it is. No, it's not that. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i definitely celebrate that holiday i went on a motorcycle trip that's to, right to we did we yeah. celebrated yeah. We exactly did. Good. Was... our juneteenth stickers on the back of our bikes <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a blast man but so habitu was another great one uh actually first off like whiskey road that was a good time yeah. dude what Prescott? city was that again Prescott. Prescott, yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm I'm glad. I mean, the hotel was like you know definitely old, but like it was. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. No, it was it was updated, but like still like the bathroom shit was kind of weird. But either way, like being right there on Whiskey Row and mm-hmm. walking distance to those bars, um, that was that was a Whiskey trip. Row sounds kind of sketchy, right? Like yeah. uh, Skid Row or something. Yeah. I mean, there was a little <laughs> Skid Row in front of yeah. some of those places. Yeah. Yeah. There was uh, tell about it in our room. <laughs> oh. We're chilling on the bed. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't tell you guys this part. <laughs> no, I was to say, I don't know this one. What happened? <laughs> so I have like all the bed and I just like get to the side, like roll over to the side to like put my shoes on or something. And the wheel fucking broke off and then the bed <laughs> fell down. Shut the fuck up, really? <laughs> so he broke the bed. And, uh, but we, we told him right away. I mean, we'd only been there five minutes. Yeah. So he just literally sat on the bed and what it was, was it just had these cheap roller frames and. Can't take an offensive lineman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Were you big boy six foot not... seven? I've yeah. never ridden with a six foot seven guy. That's pretty crazy riding behind you. And when you stick your legs out the stretch, and it looks like uh, <laughs> take a up a whole go-go lane. gadget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> we uh, ran into Jeremy today and uh, I, I, I was like, hey, what's going on? And he like turned around. I was like, hey, this is Matt. And he goes, Jesus Christ, you're big. <laughs> 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 the hotel it's like it, it, it was old mm-hmm. have y'all stayed in the uh, like the uh, hot springs hotel like where uh, Al Capone and all them were no I haven't been to that Arkansas place yet that is old that mm-hmm. when you're in there it feels like an old fucking hotel cause they haven't redone it mm-hmm. much at all right oh, this one was pretty uh, it, it yeah it had the modern uh, yeah the elevator the elevator yeah. was, was Dude, like, the fact that you left. Well, you just it was laid in bed. I don't know what I heard you, after we I heard it. when you were in there flipping me off. But I don't know why I didn't get in there with you. I must have took the stairs or something. Just laid in bed for thirty minutes, Dude. rewatching that video, giggling like a little kid at like one in the morning. Just like what is going I don't on? I remember over. what we were. Uh, talking shit about, but I guess apparently we left you. So yeah, sorry yeah, you about left that, me. Man. I was I literally sat at the bar and the bartender, which was cool as shit. Uh, she was like, I think they left you. I was like, what? We're probably like Jake's waiting to sing karaoke yeah. again. Let's I, go. Did, did we end up doing shots or something? That night? No way. No, I, I, I didn't do any shots. No, yeah, I feel like every time I end up doing shots is when I black out, and I blacked out. No, I didn't black out, but I, I don't remember why we were laughing. Is all. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember going back to the house to the oh, hotel really? at all. So when the bartender said, "I think they're leaving you," I turned and I saw, <laughs> and you were walking out, and then like you walked up to this like group of girls, and you're like. Took a picture for him and then like and then just walked out. <laughs> I, and I remember we were sitting by that window and uh, the bees. And we look over at, at uh, Matt and there's like 50 bees dead. Like, <laughs> like they all tried to sting him and they died. <laughs> right. What's going on over here? I just looked down at the ground. There's a hundred bees on the ground. It's like slow crawl. And she said, "What? They run into the? So they come into the bar because they smell like the alcohol." Sweetness. Yeah, yeah. The, the sweetness. And so they come in and like then they get stuck trying to fly out through the window. And then they get so exhausted they just like are like die. there. <laughs> yeah, they'll yeah. die or just be like really she, – she's like, are they crawling around on you? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's what they do. And, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I just get stung. I'm like, oh, my God. What's yeah. going on over here? 
I don't. It's fucking wild. But that that town, like the the the, the Italian spot we ate at, yeah, was good. Monticello. Yeah. That's yeah. one of my favorite towns in Arizona, though. I would go up there about once a month when I live there. So far, we've we've nailed it on food this entire yeah. time. We have. Yeah, actually. that was a little. Uh, uh, that was uh, some high end stuff, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> used to, uh, this is not my kind of road tripping, man. I'm like uh, gas station uh, breakfast uh, all the time. So no, yeah, man. I feel like yeah, I eat, gonna... eat like a king. <laughs> well, I mean. First night was bar food at a bar, but it just but it was good, good food. food, right? Right. The second night was an Italian spot, which wasn't really that expensive. I mean, honestly, no. it was like twenty dollar plate. But like Dude, all that the pastas were handmade. That, Dude, sea bass. That sea bass you just said like sea bass on a bike like trip. Twenty five bucks. Like, but that was like that's like that's a bad, expensive that's bad. Yeah. Dude, don't be saying because nobody had. Well, sea bass. that guy that no one had it, but that guy oh. was like, "You gotta have." Oh, a sea that's bass. right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Over the past year, Cowboy Harley Davidson has been putting in the work to help bring together various aspects of the motorcycle culture within the Austin, Texas community. They have supported not only the podcast, but also many local bike events and shows, including our FXR tour. I want to express my gratitude to the entire staff at Cowboy Harley for their support. I've had the pleasure of purchasing two bikes from Cowboy Harley Davidson in my lifetime. Most recently, I bought a Lowrider ST, which was dialed in with a few custom parts that I pretty much got to have on every bike. Whether you are in the market for a new or used Harley Davidson or looking to get your motorcycle customized, repaired, or simply maintained, you can count on their professional parts and service departments to get your bike dialed. To get in touch with them, you can visit their website, CowboyHarleyAustin.com, or simply drop in and start a conversation about about your next or even your first Harley Davidson. And don't forget to give them a follow on the gram to stay up to date with all the other happenings and events going around in the Austin, Texas area. I have been using Lexan Moto products for the past six years, and they have been an integral part of my riding experience. My journey with them started with their original FT4 headset and tire pump, but now I've upgraded to their top of the line Novus headset, which features 40 millimeter Lexan Plus speakers, CVC and DSP noise cancellation technology. With the Mesh 3.0 power technology behind it, I can connect with up to 32 riders on any given ride. Their new P5 Advanced Smart Tire Pump is a must have for every biker. I always keep one in my garage and it comes in handy during long trips if my phone battery or tire pressure is low. For more information on these fantastic products, check out their website, lexan-moto.com and don't forget to use the offer code FASTLIFE at checkout to save you 15% on your order. And lastly, head on over to Instagram and give these guys a follow at Lexan Moto. And I was like, oh, that's actually not that expensive. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, that that the, the food was good, and the the spaghetti, the meatballs, like that shit was really good. Yeah, and um, cool waitress there, cool cool place there. They made us feel pretty welcome. Yep, it just kind of set the mood right to be like, yeah, let's let's fucking turn it up tonight. Yep. you know. And then the next day, you know, we, like I said, we were talking about how we rode eighty nine A, and that that was pretty dope. It it did substantially get hotter the closer we got to forty, and then. The closer we got to fucking the California border, it just ramped up. Like, well, well, and even like, let's so, so from Fort eighty nine A starts in Flagstaff, or depending on, maybe if you're going north to south, starts in Flagstaff. We went through Sedona. Um, that stretch was a great stretch visually. It's mm-hmm. just that it's so overcrowded. Yeah, that it didn't like. I mean, and then there was some construction on it too, so that made it even mm-hmm. a little bit worse. Um, but then, so we get through Sedona and go to Jerome, which Jerome, I mean, that's kind of a eclectic cool town. Yeah, so it had, it had very European vibes, uh, just the the building structure and all that type of thing. Um, just like literally tucked on the cliff sides. Exactly. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. There was one video I have to look back at on my GoPro. It looked like what's that city in? My wife always wants like to go. Like a Mafia coast no, or something? No, is it uh, um, Santorini? Where is that place? San- well, Greece? Greece, uh, yeah. You know where you see all those white buildings yeah. on mm-hmm. the mountain? Yeah. That's like yeah. what it looked like when we came over this one hill. You just saw this, and I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. Did, yeah. did you guys? I, I, got, I definitely probably have it on my GoPro somewhere. But do you see, like, <laughs> as we were coming into town, once we got up that little, like, uh, S-curve thing, but there was, like, some chick just, like, 
running in place, holding onto yeah, the railing. Yeah, I did see that. She was <laughs> the weirdest thing in the world. Yeah, I was like, what yeah. is this lady what's doing? What's this chick doing? Here comes she's the biker. Let me, uh, <laughs> I think right. she's the one who recorded the aerobics girl on, on yeah, Waze. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. That was, uh, uh, that was a weird town. But yeah, yeah, and I had no idea. We stopped at this wine bar, and I'm like, bro, what are we doing here? And you were like, it's because the owner of, or t- one of the owners is Tool. The lead band, singer of Tool, lead yeah, Maynard. Tool, yeah. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. I was wondering why we stopped at a wine bar. Yeah. <laughs> that re- no. I didn't know that was like a record store. They had close to it, too. That place was cool, too. Yeah, I didn't realize that, too. He saw the, the, the Pussifer sign down the road, which is another one of the lead singer's bands. It was cool, all those posters. I would have probably wouldn't mind getting one. But just dealing with the hassle of trying to get it shipped back yeah. and all that bullshit. Well, the thing is, is like I'm not a huge Pussifer fan yeah. musically. Yeah. Um, even though I love Maynard, if they would have had like more signed a Perfect Circle yeah. or Tool stuff, I, I would have absolutely bought it and, mm-hmm. and sent it home. But I didn't really give a shit about it. So, what is the deal? Do you know anybody know why it's supposedly haunted? That the hotel? hotel? There? No, know. the whole city because they have the haunted. It's because it's a mining town, or I think like. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. A ton of people died. Yeah. yeah, that's how that's how Terra Lingwood is too. So, because it's a mining of, town, but I don't know about the haunted stuff. Yeah, he talked about like a uh, fuck. Um, did they say something about like Starlight or some shit had like a little vibe like that. I don't know. I could be full of shit, but I love mm-hmm. Starlight. Yeah, that's place that is cool. Restaurant, right? Yeah, the little bar restaurant in the ghost town. Mm-hmm. There. Speaking of hottest trip, I think going to Terra Lingwood is the hottest trip I've ever been. Um, road in. Really? I, Isn't that in October? During, or know. was it a different when, time of when year? When I went, I didn't go to a Terlingua. Oh, okay. We went. Our, oh. our group of guys. Yeah. We left Terlingua, and I was on the Street Glide Turbo, which was was a very hot yeah. bike. And I, we left Terlingua at 102 to get to El Paso at 105. And it was just miserable. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then I'm with these guys that are kind of, you know, a painters, not not blasting i'm mm-hmm. like oh i felt I'll be like honest with you, a blow dryer i i was kind of enjoying the cruise back tonight from the coast yeah i didn't realize that I was, yeah. yeah i liked it but i, I was did, surprised we that all an ass yeah you know not all we, we, split, we weren't splitting really yeah i, I mean we, I, I look spending way too much money hanging out on this on this first I mean, which i've gotten a lot of help from you guys too so i appreciate that but i don't know what it is it's like you you when you're when you're on a trip like this it's you know, his first big trip. It's the first time I got to me and Jake now I've ridden every time zone together. So that's a flex. That's right. So, that's right. <laughs> oh, you know, sure. you get a couple of these things together. It's like good food um, is a good way to add a great is to add another memory to a yeah. sense to a good experience. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. You know, no, I, 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 uh, I think I'll remember it forever because of some of these roads that I'll probably never ride again. Cause there's not a, need to because they're kind of out of the way yeah they're never uh yeah um yeah they won't be ever be in the i don't know if i'll ever not ride uh mm-hmm. the 29 palms highway over the 10 to me it's just like it, it, if i'm got to get home i'll i'll go I'll, i want to blast mm-hmm. through 29 palms i hate that city <laughs> i know you hate that place. <laughs> yeah but that route we did <laughs> That through highway, that was just through nice the river though. area yeah. and stuff too was really cool. It's yeah. the roller coaster feel too. That was because yeah. we did it after the powdered donuts. So. <laughs> yeah, that fuels <laughs> everything. Yeah, was after the <laughs> yeah, that fuels you. That's the first gas station stop of the day meal every but, time. You know, we had a uh, you know we we knew kind of going on this trip that we, that the bike riders movie was going to come out while we were on it. We wanted to kind of support that yep. release. So Jake got us a. Uh, Tickets to go see it in um, Lake Havasu. And big, first off, though, big shout out to uh, Chris for letting us stay oh, at his Airbnb. Yeah. Big time. You ever need uh, a place in the Lake pool, Havasu? Beautiful, man. Yeah. That, Great house. The, yeah. He, unfortunately, he couldn't be there. But, man, what a what a, a generous thing for him to do to to let us crash there. Yeah. For sure. Super comfy beds and stuff, too. Like, it was just nice to get out. That Wash pool. the clothes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um. But yeah, we went and that's when we went and had hibachi. And I don't know what it is. I don't know. We had some conversation somewhere. Some, and then sushi came onto my mind. I was like, I got, I, I'm in the middle of the desert. I want some sushi. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And I, I had no idea that that town was like as yeah the lake towns that I'm used to. It's basically, there's maybe one or two spots and it's all about the lake. But that's, I guess, 
Havasu is like a fucking. Because it's like a it's retirement like, town too. It's it's, it's like, like Florida yeah. for the West Coast. It is. That's actually a really good explanation of yeah. it. Well, and two, I and and I'm speculating here. I'm not an expert, but I feel like uh, that is definitely a spot where it's it's heavy money, but it's money from California, Phoenix, Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and shit like that. That just like comes in on like the like extended weekends yeah, yeah. and then and then goes out you know during yeah, the week. Yeah, I think for Phoenix it's only like a yeah, like three it's hours. A three three hour three I think yeah. three and a half. But yeah, you see the boats that are in that town. Like yeah. Oh yeah. yeah you <laughs> saw a picture of Chris's boat. Yeah. I, yeah. I I was at him at at uh, Arizona Bike Week and he's like, yeah, I'm going to pick up my bike, my boat tomorrow. And but I'll be back. Yeah, and yeah, I'm he's like, in, damn, how far is it? He was texting me when we got to. He's like, man, I only live once, and I, I, I'm not gonna throw it out there on how much he paid for it. But it was, oh, I saw it. It, yeah, it's, it it's was a fucking beast. I mean, it's a let's put it this way: it's a uh, it's a sizable mortgage, the fuck type of a thing. Yeah, it's a it's a badass uh, boat. Maybe he'll let me ride on it one day, but I don't know. It'll definitely let you. You don't, don't have big enough tits. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I got big enough tits. I just don't look good with my shirt off. <laughs> we'll just put a bikini fucking top yeah. on. Yeah. There you go, man. I start calling you Denise. <laughs> <laughs> For riding that thing? Denise. I'll tell you what I've seen. This boat is so fast, it doesn't even uh, have like the regular speedometer. It just says uh, like the numbers are. A lot smaller, which means like one is ten. It's freaking fast. I mean, yeah. so when you're going, yeah, I think he said he got it over a hundred miles an hour, dude. On the water, right. a hundred miles an hour on the water on, on a boat is, is fucking nuts. Yeah, fuck that. Get that fucking. Uh, did you guys ever uh, eliminator this, wobble? This. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys ever? I mean, this is this is old now, but remember um, that video of that boat on the lake where they like had the the video like on the dash. And they're like sitting there, like cruising, yeah, yeah. Oh, cruising yeah. and then they hit this major wave, and like fucking all these oh, chicks, like so smashing her into the freaking dash. Oh, they were all kind of like they, they were kind of bracing, but they were kind of like riding with the waves. Yeah, Boom. and then like yeah. they hit a nasty one, and basically everyone just smashed into it. Yeah, I don't fuck with any of that, man. I don't do boats. <laughs> I don't mind a boat. I just I don't I don't know. I'm not hating on people to do. They like to get out on boats either. I, I get, you afraid of the water? No, no, nothing like that. I, I already just, taught my grandson. Like it's that. boring. Forget all this. Uh, it's boring to me. I, I'm good. Look, I can go to the beach for a day. I can go to the lake for a day, and a lake meant not even the whole day. I'm bored after a couple hours. Really? Yeah. It's just what I'm gonna do. Sit on a boat. You just never, drink. Nobody's ever put you on an inner tube behind a boat. Yeah, I can. I know how to ski. I know how to slalom. All that stuff. Really? But slalom or slalom? I don't slalom. Really so I, it's but, I'm I'm fine with all that. It's just not fun to me. Like I'm like, oh yeah, go sling me off the fucking tube again. Let's do this. <laughs> you know? And I grew up with my one of my closest friends. I had two jet skis that we went out every other weekend on. So it's like it's not from a lack of being out there. It just never really resonated with me the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh. That's how I feel about golfing. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. But it's like if I have a if I have a day like that I don't have to work, you know, it's like there's just so much other shit I need to do or want to do that, you know, and it's like I don't have a friend that has a boat and I don't want to be that dude that's like, yeah. you know, trying to bum that's off that, people's shit all the time. That's the best way to have a boat. You yeah. always have a friend with a boat. But then it's like, you know, you know, in Dallas, we have a lot of lakes and most of the lakes have, you know, the little party cove things. That they all kind of link them up and start mm-hmm. partying together. And that's cool. But then... You're getting fucked up on the water. You still get DWIs on water. It's like, I don't want to fucking deal that's with That's what you have someone else. I'm sure that's what people think about us in the motorcycle. They're like, what is the big deal about... Uh... Yeah, same. But it's, it's not to say that like being on a boat and all that stuff is not cool. It's just like, you know, some people like this and some people like that. You know it's, I, mean? it, I will say, though, it's easier to get overly fucked up on the water because you're generally yeah. in like heat... And you're just like you're just like constantly drinking. I can't beers imagine or whatever. being in Lake Havasu. So I've never been on the lake when it's over a hundred like that. Mm-hmm. When I used to go to the lake in New Mexico, it's not getting in at Lake Havasu when just I went outside the house to throw something in the outside trash can. Yeah, yeah. I was like, 
just or riding with our, without helmets. Stuff. Yeah, you see all the women out there? Their fucking skin look like goddamn leather. <laughs> dude. Look like my nuts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was like Florida. I mean, that Florida chicks can look like that, too. So, I will say this. Like, one time we all went out to uh, Craig's uh, Tarpon Turbos, and he took us out on a boat to, like, on the on in the Gulf, like, from where they have, like, little islands, but there's the – you can, like, pretty much – you know how the homeboy's pool was where it was like a, a foot deep? Mm -hmm. It's like that for like a long ass Yeah, way. that's a like, place like Destin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, where the mm -hmm. guy just mm -hmm. got uh, bit by the shark. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see in the water like clearly. The, the hard thing out there was like the Last week. the tarpons I think is the one that you got to watch out for. You that's why you have to eat the, the sharks. On Start the eating seafood. Like I had a great time out there. Like we, we rode the boat out. It's like a, a ways to get out there. You, then you dock it and everybody just kind of hang on the water. That was fun. I don't want to do that the next day. I don't want to do that again. It's because right. I'm just going to get drunk again. There's no new adventure to that. But like, yeah. you know, I feel like I realized this when we went up to that restaurant up at Lake Texoma, like boat people are boat people. Like yeah. they dress a certain yeah. way. They do things a different way. That's and true. I was like, we're different types of people yeah. than them you know we have black t-shirts so yeah <laughs> they're wearing you know hey they dudes got exhaust and, dude flaps and holds yeah. Like that picture, dude. <laughs> yeah but having suit seems cool i mean it, it would be cool to see that or be on a boat like there but I don't i've know. seen videos this is something i've always wanted i to think it gets pretty wild yeah yeah, yeah. But it's I, like we were at Key West. They do those fucking speedboat things there too, and that shit's like big money stuff that they do down there. Dude, those speedboats are nuts. Yeah, like yeah. I gr I grew up on Lake on Lake of the Ozarks, and uh, I mean they they've got the same thing going on mm -hmm. with like this this. There's one weekend. Uh, I don't know why it's like eluding my memory right now. Why it, what it's called? But the the speedboats where they like basically block everything off, but then they have like Party Cove or. So yeah. It's like a thousand boats all like lined up together, you know. Oh, hey, those are massive, so you could do ten hundred different things in that place. Yeah, I don't know. It's a great time. I'm not going to sit there, but I get what you're saying. I'm, yeah, I'm not trying to hate on everybody else's fun. I, I, just, I get what you're saying, fun. like where like because even I sit there and think like, do I want to do like would on a motorcycle trip if I'm doing like four days? Am I going to be partying all day long? Yeah. In the sun. No, I'm not. Yeah. But on a boat, I would be. And it's a good time. But I'm probably going to feel like absolute shit a lot of those days. Yeah. It's like a, on a bike trip, it's, you know, kind of like what we were doing here. It's like we we didn't drink at all for the most part when we were in Havasu. First off, it was hot. Right. Uh, we're coming off of a fucking pretty strong night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you were hung over during a lot <laughs> Yeah, that was the tough uh... Yeah. I mean, I, I, I had to take some BC powder and... It yeah. took me a while to get back normal too, but so yeah, I'm like, sticking to beer, man. I stick to beer. I can't do uh, <laughs> those whiskey coats. Yeah, I was like whiskey. All right, yeah, we'll try this whiskey stuff. But you didn't seem to hesitate in the moment. <laughs> yeah, it was going. It's smooth in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you can't. I mean, like the New Mexico bike night. We went in there. We had a couple beers. Um, go back. We all kind of, you know, it's mm -hmm. like the first day of the trip, which well, usually that was a long day too. Yeah, yeah I was awesome. so tired. I left early on. Like I felt bad. Like, about I, was I mean, we were me. we were on the bikes for ten and a half, eleven hours that day. So I think it was thirteen. But at the end of it, well, I'm saying like oh, on, yeah, the, on bikes. the bike. Yeah, yeah like yeah. You no know, total travel time was probably closer to thirteen. But um, yeah, that was that was a day that you just don't want to like rage. Yeah. And then you know, would you so? We talked a little bit about bike riders, but, you know, what do you guys think? Like, quick synopsis of it, if you will. Yeah, I'll let someone else go first. I got mine. I liked it. I I, I liked it. I didn't know that it was about a specific club but <clears throat> before, but, yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I really like it. like you saw it, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, I mean, were you, I don't get into the, all the artistic stuff. I mean, I, yeah, what I really just, liked is the, you know, especially after meeting Scott and stuff, I didn't know that that was a thing that people rent fucking Harleys to movies and shit like that. Yeah. That, that made me start to think, fuck, maybe I should start looking at some old bikes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can rent my old ass truck that's hey, in my garage. You realize there's been like, 
two fucking motorcycle TV shows or movies in the yeah. last like two decades. So like yeah. that's yeah. just nice tax. He's been holding the for a long time. Right. Well, it's like Scott said, he's trying to uh, get his hands on a couple of police bikes because those are the ones that get rented out a lot. Oh, yeah. So a couple of little police bikes, little FXR police bikes, or the BMWs or KZ one thousands and stuff. Yeah, Mark Umbrella. He was he knew it. He was on to something. Yeah, but I, I really it was cool like seeing him. him out here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what'd you think of it, Matt? I like I really liked it. I mean, I, I thought it was a good movie. I mean, I can have two different sides of my brain where I just want to turn it off and just be entertained or mm-hmm. I want to see something interesting. And like this one to me was like more than like an interesting, you know, different uh movie. I can see where some people may be like, hey, this doesn't have enough action or this is to this, but overall I thought it was like a good blend of everything and, and well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish I would have read the book. Yeah, yeah I mean, the I, book is not, the book. it's not so much of a... You're not going to, you're not going to think it's like drastically, the, the book is a good book, but it's more of a picture book with just like some interviews. Yeah. They Which are cool. Kind of yeah. <laughs> 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 well, what I'm getting at is like the movie. No, but it's, everybody keeps saying, or like you said that like they didn't, they made it close to the book, right? Yeah, because like, I mean, the thing yeah. is that like this book, and, and, and I'm speaking out of like, from what other people that knew about this way before I did, right? I only have only had a connection to this book for like the last year and a half, maybe. Yeah. The people that have been really connected to this book, they've been connected to this book for decades of being in the motorcycles. This book existed. Mm-hmm. Like I said, like what I've been talking about these podcasts for the last like 10 months is we're all, we've all been so soaked into whatever's happened on social media. There's all this culture that exists in print mm. Yeah, I find I found it kind of surprising that a one percent club would let this reporter well, along with them. That that was that, the difference of being back then, though. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wow. We'll, we'll think about it. Like, well, you kind of watch that club change from yeah, well, you know, like was, a I guess it was a one percent at the no, start. No, always to- was, but it was. Uh, it changed the meaning of what the one percent meant. Yes, yeah. well, the and level not, of and, it, and not only like obviously this movie was not a uh, a, a true story, but it it was the same time period in the same concept as like almost famous mm-hmm. yeah. with with that guy like that was just like followed the band around and and it was a inter- just interviewed shit right so yeah. like it's not too far-fetched from the time period of what it was mm-hmm. um but what i think is unique about this is the i'm actually kind of su- I, I actually think that the 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 club probably actually thinks today about this movie is I, I i think initially there was probably some things of like oh we don't want this out but then at the same time they're probably like no this is actually cool like hollywood with major actors mm-hmm. documented our start yeah mm-hmm. so yeah i just know i remember years ago i was a, um in alpine texas and it was this one percent only um, specific color party and uh, I'm there with this one guy he's, he's one of the guys that rode an older guy he was a lot older than me or he's probably I don't know he's probably like 70 years old now mm-hmm. big photographer guy right mm-hmm. not a and he's taking pictures we thought he was gonna get his ass jumped really? I mean these guys were like what are you doing yeah you know mm-hmm. and he's like oh I'm just take. yeah you don't do this <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there was. I'm sure Danny Lyon well, had some connection how to him things before. have changed. You know? well, yeah, because even though like there was so, no internet, or you could have yeah. one of those things just put out in a second. Yeah. I mean, they had people doing interviews with them a long time ago. I mean, Hell's Angels did interviews with like Rolling Stone, things like that. You know, but the thing was that you just never could talk about club business. Mm-hmm. You know, and but that's the thing that people want to talk about. You know what I mean? So it's always been. Yeah. The thing that's most interesting to the people that don't know is the thing that you're not allowed to speak on, right? Um, the, the I think that over the course of and what that movie kind of depicted was why it got to the point of like no cameras, no police, no rats, no nobody. You know why they wrote in that part of them beating homeboy with the with the uh, the wood fire, or whatever the fuck. I, I'm I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm glad I watched. That I listened to the podcast with oh, with Milburn with Milburn before I watched it mm-hmm. because if not I don't think it would have meant the same. Mm-hmm. Knowing, hearing his side of it, how his how important it was to yeah 
no one have was, have stuff look authentic like and stuff Craig, yeah. that that uh that made me understand and respect it more. I don't think I he said he noticed it like on that one initial scene at the beginning. And sorry for spoiling it for people listening, but when he's on that police chase at the beginning, mm -hmm. there's one time he looks down and his gauges are black, and there's another time he looks down and it's a white gauge. And that's how like dialed Milburn yeah. was looking at all that stuff. So I was li I uh I was listening to that and my wife always gives me because that's me. I'm always like I'll, we'll be in the middle of a movie and what are you doing? She's pausing and I'm like, look at this, rewind <laughs> it. I catch all those little things yeah. and <clears throat> she's like, who notices that? I'm like, yeah, I do. So yeah. I get it. And that's what I mean is I I'm glad I listened to that before I saw it because now I think I understand and respect it more that how important they take their job of well for yeah. for him and that because of the movie being so close to home and it goes back to what i was saying that like for a lot of people this book meant a lot more to them because for the people that's been around longer than instagram reels this was media to motorcycling the same way mm. to certain people <clears throat> in different ways now it's art though right mm -hmm. like as a aspiring photographer, I mean, everybody in here, except for you, kind of fucks I'm with a camera. I'm an aspiring photographer. Yeah, we're yeah. getting on the camera. I ah, phone for Go, GoPro. Go, yeah, you get Go you GoPro Go that shoots everything. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everything. And probably an AI. As long as the bug guts are not in the front of it. <laughs> but it takes a while to, like, train your brain or for your brain to see the beauty in certain types of photography. Right. It's that's documentary photography. It's different yeah. than, um, you know, what most of us do to take pictures mm -hmm. these days. No, most and that's us, what I told you. I think I appreciate more. I said I see I can see people buying a picture book, not just of people's bikes, but of the random pictures I've seen of you and your buddies that post stuff from different campouts and stuff like yeah. Yeah. like the candid, the candid <laughs> stuff. Yeah. That's what I could see being a cool picture book. For yeah. sure. Those Picture are probably books, my favorite. Not, not like uh, right. my bike on the town meetup. Yeah. Roll yeah, out. like if you just, look, that's the same thing. It's like if you go out and you take 100 badass photos at all the cool ass spots, that's why I said you don't stop at the overlooks. That's yeah. a good photo for you. It's maybe good something yeah. to take in, but that photo is the same photo everybody's taking. Sure. Right. I loved how that movie, though, they always like when they introduced the character, they had that pose. Yeah. That like, constructed photo but then it kind of showed like my them favorite, just chatting my, which is like because well, it's a photo out of the book yeah, yeah. well no i know yeah. but that's what's kind of cool is it gives you that constructed photo and then it gives you that yeah if I you know that behind the scenes two years ago at the polar ride of uh dirty larry being in the uh, cave, <laughs> cave i mean yeah. <laughs> i have that picture and Dude. it's like you know what? If you didn't weren't there it's not the yeah. same you know not, not only the in the cage but getting him out or, 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 or like, like, because the, the poles were too yeah. close we had, like literally had to like push him out of it yeah um but anyway uh, so so to that point of the movie i think it was as as a person in the motorcycle culture uh i really enjoyed the story i really enjoyed the movie um the one thing that i would sit there and say though is like every like review or synopsis of the movie talked about how basically the main character Kathy or one of the main characters Kathy the you know Benny's wife having this struggle of of like not you know like not letting Benny like stick stick around I don't know I'm trying to think back here and and I'm I'm not trying to give any way any spoilers but I didn't see I don't. I don't feel like I. I saw too much of like how truly sh um, conflicted that piece was of like mm. the relationship between her, Benny, and the club until towards the end. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? Like you think he was conflicted too? No, no, no. Like I. I feel like the the review of the movie was, or at least the um, the synopsis. The synopsis was that like she was trying to pull him away and she kind of had those that one conversation with benny but it it was not or i'm sorry with johnny but uh it was like after one incident and uh incident type of a thing yeah almost like there wasn't enough incidences to where it made sense for why she was trying to pull him away mm -hmm. right but if you i mean okay so if you back up a little bit if you think about 
the um, initial thing to put them in the cast, right? Yep, yep. That's them in the hotel room. That's <clears> the <throat> first time. Baby, yep. right. And then the second incident was the almost, you know, getting raped thing. But that, her coming to ask him to Was get it that out, after that? It was after that. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I think that... It, put, okay, I think that's more... more <clears throat> More real life than most people think. Oh it's, yeah, for sure. The very it's, thing that like when probably attracted her to him yeah. is the very thing that she hated about yeah. him. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think that's more. So, I think that resonate with more people. The hardest part about this is the, exactly when, you know, the crazy thing is me and Jake and Jaden and, and Jive Ass Honky were in Austin, and some random chick told us about this movie being made in December of twenty two. I think. Yes. And we're like, what? There's a movie coming out on bike riders? That was the first time I ever heard of the book then. Mm-hmm. And then the first time I saw the book was at Michael Lichter's six months later. But what started happening was that everybody I knew that knew about the book and I started talking about it, then started talking to me. And they're worried that they were going to like just – the book would be like the premise behind it, but it would have nothing to do with the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So – Jeff Nichols had this like task of keeping all of us happy or all the people that are really connected to this book happy Mm -hmm. for it really representing the book, Mm -hmm. but then trying to make it palatable in a complete story for an audience. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the book's not written to be that. So the script had to be, it could, I mean, the script, you could look at it as, and he, he laid, he leaned more into being correct to the book, or he could have leaned more into telling uh, an embellished story, an, right. a, 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 an embellished version of that story. Right. And I mean, I can't, I enjoyed it, but I, like you said, I'm so close yeah. that it's hard, it, it's, it's hard not to see. The way I... If you're looking for high quality motorcycle lighting, then check out Custom Dynamics. It doesn't matter if your motorcycle has been around the block or it's fresh off the showroom floor. They offer a wide range of LED lighting options for various models, as well as custom applications. They have been in business for over 25 years and are committed to providing top-notch products at competitive prices. On my FXR Chopper, I'm running one of their custom application LED tail light strips and their industry standard 5.75 LED headlight. And on my Lowrider ST, I have been running their Pro Beam Series LED turn signals, tail light, and headlight. You can check out their website at customdynamics.com to explore the available LED lighting options for your motorcycle. And don't forget to follow them on Instagram at Custom Dynamics. Honestly, I think the way it was directed and the way like, I could actually see it winning some major awards. Yeah. I really could. Um, But when I think about it as what the movie means for the motorcycle culture, will it advance it or not? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I, I think don't, who, uh, how slow do you got to be riding to ride with no sunglasses or not? Yeah, that's the hard part to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> but back then in the 60s, it probably didn't matter. The wind wasn't that hard back then. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. I'm like, how slow are those bikes? They weren't in Havasu. <laughs> yeah. I was actually thinking. Did they of, have sunglasses uh, back then? Uh, no, <laughs> no, or regular glasses. Like, uh, yeah, yeah they well, have regular dude. glasses. No, I know, that's but a, I mean, like, were they going that slow that. that I'm goggles? curious. I am because they true. raced. I'm curious though. Like I was actually thinking while I was watching the movie, some of those, um, some of those uh, uh, scenes. Since basically I grew up in that area where I think a lot of that shit was filmed. Um, that I, I don't know where they were, but it looked like Iowa. Uh, it was the, the the original book took place between. Chicago, Milwaukee area, yeah. and Cincinnati and stuff like that. Right, but, Iowa, but where was the film done? It was all filmed in Cincinnati. Cincinnati, yeah. I mean, the, or not it kind of all uh, looks very like Kentucky, similar. Cincinnati area, like okay. right in that okay. little border. You know, how Cincinnati's on the yeah, border, yeah, yeah. Ohio, okay. and all that. Okay, but they, I mean, it was just good to see. It was strange being in the theater and there's like twelve people in there, right? Us being four of them. I don't know if there's more than twenty five in the whole. Like building though. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. it was it was a little weird. It was on the construction. We're like in a vacation town, so it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That was weird. But that it was, was the first cool movie see. theater I was in. That was hot. <laughs> yeah, uh, 
But it didn't start hot, but it got hot during the middle of it. Mm. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all Choked. good. It's a, uh, but it was cool to see it and you know add that onto this trip and right and whatnot and it, you know it just it was just cool you know but yeah. the, I knew for a fact that we were gonna have to like really get up the next morning and get on the road. And plus, I wanted to. I, we didn't quite make it to the area that I really wanted to shoot on that 29 Palms Highway. I was wondering because <laughs> it, there, it was a spot, but you. It's like you guys got ahead of me at one point, and where I wanted to stop, uh, I would have stopped, and then no service, and y'all would have kept going and had to turn around. It's just like uh, could have been a good spot, could not. It was kind of like I just rolled the dice that I, I'm not going to stop. Okay. So, but it's – No, that one that you took by that <coughs> by that uh, cactus was nice, I, yeah. but it was so hot nobody even tried to <laughs> also get their bike up there. We're like, yeah. I don't need another picture. I, just picture right? <laughs> I wanted a picture of a fucking cactus. The hard part, I'm you trying found to the take... weirdest looking cactus in the yeah, whole it was desert. Badass. <laughs> yeah, but then he had just told me about some fucking uh, snakes. snakes before. So <laughs> yeah. the whole time I'm like looking around everywhere for fucking green Mojaves or whatever the fuck they're called. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Um, but no, the um, you know, the, I want to take pictures of shit on this trip that's not just motorcycles, but can tell the story of of the land that we're going to. Kind of like tonight where we like went to that little spot. You know, you had like the little ocean view, the little, you know, the land yeah. coming back mm-hmm. out. It's like, yeah, I can keep trying to put the bikes in it, which I did. We did. We get, we got a couple of shots with the bike, but I want to get some like silhouetted palm trees and fucking, mm. you know, shit like that, yeah. you know? So it's like, yeah. kind of you're saying, if you really think about it, when you travel on a motorcycle, there's things that you see and feel, you know, sure. you like when we got on the highway leaving there, you... The sun's down, but there's still that glow coming from behind on the horizon. Yeah, it's you know awesome. Yeah. It was beautiful. And those kind of things are the things that you want. I want to capture photographically so that when whatever comes of this, it puts you in that place of like, oh, I feel that. That's mm-hmm. what a David Mann painting is like. When mm-hmm. you see these paintings that he did back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, or 70s, 80s, and 90s, yeah. it it's usually something that was based on what he experienced on some kind of road trip with his friends. And then it resonates because a lot of us go feel those same things, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the thing about like wanting to create art for the motorcycle world is that you have to connect with the, the commonality things that we all end up feeling, seeing and smelling and hearing. And And you're, you're trying to capture that essence of things that a lot of people can't go out and do that you're able to, and, and kind of show them that. And Put them in the moment, which yeah. is really cool, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's the hope, but you know, it's the the coming out here. I wanted to go to Born Free. I, I mean, I love that show, and it's like one of those things that, like, I hundred percent plan to do it every year. Mm-hmm. I can. Same thing with Sturgis. Even though right now, I kind of in my head, I'm like, do I need to go to Sturgis? But then I know as soon as we get around to it, and y'all, you guys start riding up, I'm like, how dope would it be to be on a trip? ride out here with you guys and then ride right. home with you guys from another event in a month from now you know what i mean i know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hopefully i still have a wife <laughs> i really hope i'm gonna get on cameras last thing i'm gonna do is log in one day and she's got like a fucking gangbang going on or some shit <laughs> <laughs> just sitting here like you, you know you get home from the trip and uh doorbell rings and the fucking weirdo's like uh, here, here for the gangbang. <laughs> yeah, old school. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're doing. <laughs> Dwayne's house. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bunch of ladies in the pool, man. <laughs> they kept the pool boy there. Right, I think I'm probably the only one in the world with no cameras in his house. <laughs> if they always keep trying to sell me on cameras. I'm like, bro, if my Amazon packages are come, I'd tell them and they send me a new one. Yeah, <laughs> why don't I need a camera? All right, true. <laughs> So what do y'all but, think about, like, what was y'all's favorite, like, what was your favorite area? What was your favorite road? I think I know this, but, like, of all the places we've oh, been we so talk far. talk about Big Bear, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so for, uh, I, I, I would probably say my favorite road was 89A, but from out of, out of Prescott. Even yeah. even though yeah. the, the Jerome uh, stretch was good, too, mm. um, the Big Bear stretch was really good as well it's, it's just visually like amazing seeing that yeah, high right but yeah but it was also long and like when you're like when you're doing long twisties like that like you just get to the point where you're like i'm kind of 
kind of over. Well, after like four days of it, I think it was yeah. just like if it was like you rode <laughs> yeah. up there to ride down, like yeah, I could see it being like, yeah. oh, this was awesome. Especially the way we ride those twisties, a lot of times like we're we're pushing it, mm-hmm. and so you got to be mentally on most of those times or all of that time. And I just the, towards the end, I was just like, okay, I'm fucking kind of I'm kind of over this. Yeah, and you and you haven't even really done like uh, fifty miles of lane splitting. That's what I was expecting, which we haven't really had to see. Yeah, we did a little bit of lane splitting, like yeah. freeway, but when I don't know if I m- must come, I guess coming from California through Palm Springs, I mean it's like you're lane splitting the entire way here, and so when you get here, you're like spent. Yeah. Oh yeah, because there's know. that traffic is just nonstop yeah. from there out to the coast, and it's different because you're going about I don't know sometimes fifty miles an hour when yeah. cars are at a dead stop, yeah. and that's freaky, man. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely. I I I like when we split at higher speeds because it seems easier. Mm-hmm. Um, when cars are at a dead stop, it's it's. Yeah. Well, you know they can't like quickly switch lanes mm-hmm. at that point. Yeah. So this was my first experience legally splitting lanes. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And 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 Matt, your your first time. Oh sure. yeah. I know you've split, sure. we, you and I have split lanes in Texas a few times, but. Um, it's it's a it's a better feeling here knowing like because when you split lanes in texas which i don't do a ton but like there's just sometimes it's so hot traffic so bad that you just have to do it and i uh the problem is is like when i'm doing that in texas i'm constantly one you got to like pay attention to all these cars but then you're like okay is there a cop up here too that i got to worry about and here like having that aspect like removed was, was but also nice. in Texas, if they see you do that, they almost want to block you because yeah. like, you're not supposed to be doing that here. Yeah. We're you, here you for do the have a lot of that. 99% of it. Like people are like getting out of your, like there's a lot of times people got right out of our way as soon as they yeah, saw us. They saw it and they moved over for sure. Except for that lady with the handicap plate. She was. <laughs> yeah, she hated us. Yeah, she got, you guys. that forerunner? Yeah, that forerunner. <laughs> she was like, fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah. She must be from Texas. <laughs> she probably was. <laughs> Not on my watch. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, Big Bear was cool. I, did, I never got a chance to do that before. And um, it's pretty. I, I could imagine that be, you know, if you're in like the San Bernardino County, Riverside County, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Um, I could see that being like, hey, let's go rip up there on a Saturday. Yeah. That's- have lunch. You know, and then come back down. Are you going to go back to that backside and then come back around, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. That was one thing I actually thought about a couple times. I'm like, man, if you lived in this area, I mean, you have so many great roads within just a you know two three hours. Yeah, we have to ride two or three hours just to get somewhere. Yeah, and, and not even <laughs> you're still that's flat. not even close to the roads. Yeah, you're still on flat shit. Yeah, but those aren't my favorite. I'm not the best on those uh, first and second gear twisties. I no? don't really care for. It. I yeah. like big sweepers. You like I'm the big not, sweepers? I'm not a big. Uh, like Second that, gear, that ride in from to uh, what is it? Um, Deadwood from Sturgis. When you get some of those those big oh, long sweepers, yeah. Yeah. as long as you're there before the yeah. Friday when the cops start coming yeah. out. So I I, uh, I I got to change that crash bar that I have on my bike and it's got that skateboard wheel. Which you don't uh, like that? No. What's what's what? What do you like about it? <clears throat> it's too low. And are you hitting on the ground? On. You're not well. Going when I'm, I'm, uh, no, I'm not scraping anything like you. Uh, and mine's like five inches lower and I'm still not scraping. <laughs> but when I look down, it's all in your head. And I see that skateboard wheel like half an inch to the ground. It, I'm like, I don't need to be, You're supposed to be looking at that for the first part. I know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. You can be looking way like ahead. Target officiation. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I did before, and I'm like, it's just too low. I, I wish I had. A, I want to get a higher crash bar. They make higher ones though. And change that skateboard because that just makes it even lower. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've always yeah. felt like crash bars. Me personally, crash bars are they cause more damage when you wreck, like really wreck. But they're great if you're dropping your bike. They're kind of like training wheels, in my opinion. They're good to have if you're trying to learn how to like ride yeah. a bike. But it, once you fuck? start riding. No, I, I <laughs> do like cra- cra- crash bars can bend frames. Yeah. They can break cases. 
Um, they can pogo your bike. They can yeah. That's back. what I'm worried about is pogoing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I see that, and just because it has a fucking wheel on it doesn't mean it's not going to pogo you. Yeah, right. and the and the truth is, like, I mean, realistically, the best crash bars that are probably the most safe are the Harley ones. Yeah, they just don't look as cool as like all these skateboard poke out wheels uh, things. Well, honestly, like high speed, the crash bars are probably actually a bad idea. It, the cra- the only like the crash bars that are out there today that I've seen anyway that I feel like is just when the simple tip overs. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like those are where those value are. But if you're like has some decent speed and you catch that to your point like the pogoing and all that other shit like mm-hmm. the it, it, or the bending the frame yeah it's like they uh they can all come back and just start snapping stuff snap tabs off your frame um it i don't know i mean it's one of those things it's like it, it's something that a lot of people can afford and when they finally get that 500 dollars in their bank account it's like another thing they can buy their bike right and it doesn't yeah. they can put it on they don't have to pay anybody to do it for the most part um you That's know, point. it adds like some kind of immediate kind like, of me- you know, mirrors are overrated too. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I got mine is I thought it got came in my head because I when I first got that bike, I there was a parking lot incident where a guy cut cut me off and I was in the middle of a turn and I hit the brakes and, and yeah, yeah. I caught the bike and that was the worst idea ever. I popped my hamstring, I fucked up my hand, it was not do not catch a road glide going down on the ground. It's not smart. And uh, so I was Still like this. Holding. Yeah. Right. So I was like, <laughs> so like this, I was like, ah, I can just drop it and not care. Just put your leg down, dude. <laughs> I like, did. That's how I like hamstring pop. Crash party. <laughs> I know. You got I did. And that's what popped my hamstring. So I was just like, ah, this will just so I can just drop it and not care. But I get the point now. I do like the front, though, because I can put my legs up on yeah, it. Yeah. So I can't have them on my green road glide. So I'm kind of. Like it's it's like since I can't have crash bars, I'm. You want? <laughs> yeah, I'm like I got some, so I don't want to get rid of them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, but like I said, it's it's different for everybody. Certain oh ones. <laughs> <laughs> you you did the whiskey coke on your own this time. <clears throat> yeah, dude. The last hard. one was good. You guys are hardcore, man. I... <laughs> I even had ganache tonight. Didn't you, or weren't you just in London doing some crazy shit? And you're talking yeah. about spending money. Yeah, but I ate like five guys in London. Not did you, not do, even, did you do the absinthe over there? Isn't, no, what is that? It, isn't that a thing? The the liquor that uh, has like the psychedelic in it that like, the fucking makes no. you like see like the little little green men. No, never yeah. heard of that shit. It's like wormwood. I drank uh, fucking beer. I did have something. It's called. Uh, <clears throat> my daughter works in a, a pub. Like one day a week, and I guess Guinness beer has, they have this liqueur that is, it's basically like great Kool-Aid <clears throat> type of a thing that is specific to London. Okay. And it's called a Guinness Black. And so it's like they put a little bit of sweet mm. in that beer, and it makes it just taste like a regular, a Guinness, a regular beer. It's mm, great. Nice. I've never had Guinness, but I imagine it's pretty it's mm. thick, but it's I, thick. I, I, but if you put it's a this good winter beer. London liqueur that you can't just like get it total wine or something, it's specific mm. over there. I'm mm. sure you can get it on Amazon or something, but it was uh, <laughs> I don't know some fucking berry can flavor. You, do they sell? Can you Amazon liquor? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you can. I don't know. I think you got to buy that. It's from not like a liqueur. It's it's a it's basically like a Kool Aid, like a like berry. a mixer. Mm. Yeah, mixer. Okay, that's where. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. I don't know, man. I'm kind of redneck. Just Coors Light and freaking Miller Light. Yeah, yeah I don't know, man. That the Big Bear stuff was dope. And then, uh, so what yeah. y'all think? What did you new guys? What did you think of Born Free? Like pros cons. I mm. I loved it. Um, it. Obviously, this year's hot, but like that, you know, you can't control that. Um, but the 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 crowd of what the demographic is. I mean, you didn't have. I feel like everyone that was there was very similar into what our interests are. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was very, you know, like the 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 niche side of things, um, or the genre, I guess, of what motorcycles are that we're into was like spot on. Um, ton of great vendors. Yeah, I, I thought yeah. you know that was that aspect of it was was spot on. Um, 
Yeah, I was actually debating this during as we were walking around because like I saw a couple booths that like, oh, I wonder if they're doing installs. But then yeah. like none of that's going on. But I was like, ah, maybe maybe it's better that it's not that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I I loved it. And you know, uh, previous to this trip, someone had told me I can't remember who now, but said that Born Free California was like by far the best event of the year. And I think I tend to, I, I, I can't argue that it's not. Mm-hmm. I, I, the package of it, right? Because right. Cook's Corner, we were like, hey, this is right. going for an hour and a half. <laughs> right. We're t- yeah. 10.30 last night. Exactly. You know? I, I I can't sit here and say that it's not, it's, it's for sure top three. Yeah. Um, and I think it, it makes a strong push for it being the best. Yeah, as far as like a event is concerned, I, I think it is. But I, I'm not, I don't really compare that to like Daytona or Sturgis. I think like, you know, if we're saying like a, our camp out or get or, or no, like Fandango or, you know, fucking name your shit Chopper Fest, those kind of things, right? I think it's the best as far as the collection. Sturgis is just, it, it's just, Hundred, almost a hundred year old thing. It's 86, 85, whatever the fuck it's at now. Yeah, I think it's I would say Sturgis and Four, Daytona yeah. is the only install place that I would I think. Like, oh, no, they do a lot. They did of, like a lot of the big rallies, like Arizona yeah. Bike Week and stuff, too. Well, I think just this year, yeah, no, but Arizona, well, yeah, I guess, but because like, they do it at the, the Texas one, they Arizona do it. Yeah. yeah, if you go down to Lone Star, too, which I do, Lone Star is fun, but the but to the thing of like Born Free, it, it's just a Killed that motherfucker. Did you get that? Seriously? Yep. Damn. Um, Like I said, I I was telling you, for networking, there's by far no better better place. Yeah, you can tell that. Like everyone's talking Mm -hmm. to each other and from the one booth to the next. You're you're literally, and it's like what um, like Oliver Pick said a long time ago. It's like that year that Brad Pitt showed up to it. You know, not that we're gonna network Brad Pitt, but it's like one of those things. It's a draw, Mm -hmm. right? You got everything from Rusty Butcher to Power Plant to San Diego Customs to Concrete Cowboys. Yeah. You know, it's like this this thing that I keep like seeing is that you have the chopper community that coexists with the performance motorcycle community. Yeah, it is a different dynamic. And then you have mm-hmm. the crowd that looks like they're a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got a little bit of performance guys. You got a little bit of Vikla guys. You got a little bit of fucking, oh yeah, hell yeah, brother dudes. You got chopper mm-hmm. people. Like it's just, it brings everybody together. But I think that's also the, to the testament of like choppers. I think choppers are synonymous to the old heads because of the being the bikes that they kind of grew up around, especially now that they're all more Yeah, but vintage. you don't see anybody old on choppers anymore. Yeah, because it's a young man's kind of thing. You know, it's a... You, you can't ride a chopper. I mean, you want to be able to ride a chopper for the rest of your life, but your body can't take that shit. Like, do you imagine riding a fucking hardtail chopper? Dude. This dude right here? I actually, you should. I yeah. think it's cool that... You know, we, you brought up a good point earlier, and we I don't know, maybe we can kind of talk about it a little bit, because mm-hmm. I'm interested in understanding it myself. That It's like, you know, you got Born Free. You got all these vintage Harleys that are kind of like repurposed or re- rebuilt and brought out there. And you see Harley a hundred percent in, right? Major event uh, sponsor, you know, of Born Free. You got the oh, fucking CEO. Yeah, yeah. Just, Every everybody isn't that the, also like kind of the unveiling of like the bikes that they take around to the different events throughout the year too. Uh, just the builders, just things. Okay. It's yeah. which is we can talk about those bikes too in a second. But yeah, at Cook's Corner, I saw Brad Richards and uh, I can't remember. His, to how to say his name, but the CEO of Harley, and they were looking at these, uh, and that was at Cook's Corner. They were looking at the the builds of the, the People's the Choice, people's Bil- built well, People's Choice, I think, is what it was. And they're mostly like chopper stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I remember Brad in previous videos and stuff like that mentioning how they like go to these events to get inspiration for. Uh, what they should come out from the factory. And I, I remember just sitting there thinking to myself, like, as I'm like, I watch, I literally watched them almost like creepily, those two look at these, these six bikes or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, like, looking at these bikes, watching, like, what, as what they were pointing out. I'm like, 
what of any of these bikes would they ever think that they're going to put into a new bike? Mm -hmm. Because like that, and, and it's cool that they're doing this, but I, I, that was the piece of it. I was like, I really want, want to know like what's their um, backstory of like what they're what they're looking for out, yeah. out of this show. And I that, think I think this is what I think is the reason why I come to this is not. <clears throat> I mean, I guess it was a bike show, but I didn't even look at that stuff. It's it's really the only place you can come and see all of your friends, or yeah, yeah. You showed up through, like yeah. two hours after us, and we ran into you like pretty quickly, you know. But I, no, I mean, like I know a lot of these guys that I only really talk to on Instagram, but talk a lot mm -hmm. of times during the week, um, and it's the only time where they're all at the same place. Versus Daytona and Sturgis, because they're so spread out throughout the city. You're not going to see no, I, I agree everybody with, in one yeah. venue. I agreed with that aspect. I think I'm more. I'm thinking of it more of a from a Harley brand aspect. But here's what well, I. That's what I mean. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's Harley brand or you personally with mm -hmm. your friends. Same thing. Yeah. If it was when you're in uh, Arizona Bike Week, you got sure. Uh, Clockworks is yeah. at. <clears throat> well, they're everywhere. Well, but and, and to your point, I think I'm willing to bet. There's an aspect of this that Harley is just paying for exclusivity because there's no Indian uh, yeah. sponsorship. So they're probably, there's probably a little bit of aspect of that too where uh, they they just want to be the, the main well, person there. I, I mean, not, not to be, not to make this sound like asshole-ish, but if you were there, if you worked it there and you were in those higher ups, like where would you want to be? Like, do you want to be at Daytona? Like, right. Well, here on well, Main Street, yeah. seeing LEDs and fucking fat boner garage fucking chicks and shit like right. that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, would you not want to be around the youngest demographic well, of people on your motorcycles? Well, and think about it. Was there a? a I mean, there was. Indian does not have a, an even a booth there mm -hmm. of any kind. No other brand of motorcycle has a booth there. So I think I think there's an aspect of what they're doing is is more of a. It's the same thing like in Mono yeah. Tried. You yeah. see, I'm pretty sure you don't see Indian. I, I but there are bikes that are other than Harley. Yeah, or yeah, even yeah. the builder bikes for sure. And old yeah, ones. yeah, for sure. It, but, but it's a Harley centric event. Yeah, you know what I mean, true, true. There's no Indian Challenger fucking uh, class. Right, right. But I mean, like it, it just goes to show like that, that, and that's kind of one of those things like why I, I keep telling people like, you don't like the chopper scene, you don't, you think it's dumb, you don't understand it, blah, that's fine, that's all perception, but why do you think Harley's leaning into it? Why do you, why have they been leaning into it for years? Harley's been a staple of that, that shit since I first started going to yeah. Born Free in 17. Well, but, but, well the, here's the thing, too. Because Indian doesn't have an evil. <clears throat> no, but it's not that. But it's like, it's just in general. I'm talking about just the overall, over well, all well, the events and all the stuff but, that, that's well, out there. Here, here's the one, and don't mean to cut you off here, but here's the thing, too, from a Harley perspective. Harley cannot make another, like, an Evo or like a fucking whatever, you know, basically, like, from an EPA stand, standpoint. Mm. They can't make an engine or anything else that's going to be compliant going forward. So, like, in the chopper scene, they're not going to put a fucking M8 in that shit. Mm. So, like, basically what's out there today as far as your your shovels, your pans, your Evos. Yeah. Like, that's all. That, what's, what's out there today is all that they're going to lean into. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Maybe devil's advocate, though. It's like... There'll never, there, there'll never be another era of cars the way they were was in the '60s. Yeah, and you know I know think what I mean? that's what I was actually. Uh, thinking. Yes, no, but you, you see, you see, uh, Chevelles get LS sixes put in them. Yeah, yeah. So there is that modernizing of that. So I do. Yeah. Take your point on that, but it's also like the, it's from an era where they only made so many, right? It's like right now Correct. they're trying to do this like exclusive stuff with these right. whiskey neats and and uh, and Diablos and enthusiast collections and whatnot but there's like you want it you want 1500 made 70 years ago that's fucking that's some rare shit yeah. right and that's the same thing i've used this analogy before but when i was growing up they were all like you got to keep these you got to get comic books they're gonna be worth a lot of money one day yeah. get those baseball cards they're gonna be worth mm -hmm. a lot of money one day 
they, it was awesome when there's like fucking 400 Babe Ruth cards in existence and you have one of them. It's mm-hmm. probably worth a lot of money. Right. The same way like the Jordan rookie card was worth a lot of money because there's only so many of them. Mm-hmm. But in the 90s, they were making fucking 50 million or 50,000, 100,000. So I built, I built this bagger one time, like stretch bagger. It was the 03 uh, Ultra Classic, the black and Wait, gray. I thought you were bought, not build. Huh? Oh, fuck that. I, <laughs> I learned the hard way. I've built enough bikes <laughs> that now I'm ready to buy them. <laughs> but so I built this bagger. It was a black and silver with that, you know, that pinstripe hat. Yeah. You have to get the VIN number or some shit to mm-hmm. get it. <clears throat> and it was like, man, that that tin set's gonna be worth some money, you know. And I'm like, no, it's not. So I did save my emblems. I have all the hundredth anniversary emblems. They're not worth anything. Yeah. And the dealership, when I was telling them I was painting over it, um, I was like, well, you want to buy it? <laughs> they didn't yeah. want to buy it. Yeah. So I said, I'm fucking painting it. And Ooh. and I do know that you got to get like, you got to show your VIN number to, or that you own it to be able to get that pinstripe. Yeah. But I think you can get that stuff on eBay now. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are remaking that stuff. But it, it it's also like a value of what people say because it's like they talk about with the RT fairings or the RP RT fairings mm-hmm. is that like, Back in the day, they were pulling them and throwing them in the trash, right? Mm. Now they're going for, they kind of fluctuate. It's like market price, basically, on those. Sometimes they're two grand, sometimes they're four grand, based on like how mint and how much. Like the Springer, there. Springer uh, front ends. Yeah, Springer front ends, like Harley. They used to be hard, mm-hmm. um, just 3500 bucks for one. And now you can get now. fucking soft tail Springers for 3500 bucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but. So I, I guess the, the thing is like they are making these new bikes. They are trying to like tap into the vintage stuff. That's what the enthusiast collection, things like that. But they're also moving in to a modern era where they're having to make these motors more and more compliant to the EPA, which are going to make them more and more modern. So I don't, I don't really know. I just, but also I would say this, is it like what these guys are doing to these bikes, these born free builds, as far as like the, um, the um the chop like the builders the invited builders like those bikes are to the nines, right? Yeah, but they're not starting them though. Some of them are. Yeah, they they. I mean, like all the built well bikes that were up there last night, they all had to ride fifty miles to be there. Oh, you know just fifty. I mean? Yeah, but I mean, fuck. Oh, I guess those those bikes. Yeah, they, yeah. It's a tank. That's a fair point. You yeah. know, but it it's like um it's kind of like that I was saying about that that eighty four FXR with the fucking eight pangers I got like. I'm not taking that on a trip like I'm doing. Right. But I fucking like riding that bike with no helmet on, cruising down the road. Right. You know, mm. it feels good doing that. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I just think that the performance scene follows the chopper crowd events for the most part. I think we just coexist very well. In California, yeah. but like obviously. In, no, I think you, everywhere. It coexists, I mean, yeah, 100%. I went to Bisbee. Um, I don't know what that Bisbee run is called. It's like the Prowl. The Prowl. Yeah. Cool as shit. Mm-hmm. I have a turbo bike. Mm-hmm. There's no other turbos out there, but. I mean, was, we saw that in Big Bear with the two guys in the choppers. They couldn't get enough of your bike. <laughs> yeah. It was all those guys. I met some of the coolest guys. I was telling mm-hmm. them that story, right? I met some of the coolest guys that, and some of them young guys. Yeah. Right? I'm like, this guy's like literally a little skateboard when he's not riding his mm-hmm. old ass. He's maybe 20. Something when he's not riding his, I'm like, you must be an old soul, dude. He's like, uh, this long hair. Yeah. <clears throat> rides his feet up above the tank, you know, mm-hmm. which, fuck that. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and just. Yeah, we've enjoy. seen your ferry. You can yeah. barely see over it. <laughs> and, uh. And he's, you know, doing fucking McTwists off the half pipe and shit afterwards. <laughs> and that's showing my age right there. But like he told me about Pro Skate earlier. <laughs> yeah, but the coolest kid. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it is, yeah, a lot younger kids that are riding those. Yeah. yeah what? Well, Maybe just, it says something about us. I, they don't want to be like us. They want so, to be like the old guys. So I, I was thinking like how this compares like we saw that kind of though in like the car scene too like old mustangs got real hot so what did kind of ford lean into that old body style can came out again Mm -hmm. i'm sure we're going to see stuff it's just maybe not like next year it's something that kind of comes down more down the pipeline but they've kind of done that with like the new roguelite st that things like to the nines of what a performance 
was built for. Where yeah. I have the 2023, it's far, far behind of what a 2024 is. Yeah. So I'm sure there's other stuff that we're gonna see, just maybe not yet. But yeah, the engine that is a big. So what the do you big, think? Do you, know, you think Grammy's gonna come out with like a two gallon tank or something? <laughs> no, I don't think you're gonna do anything like that. I just think that like these bikes appeal to certain people for the different challenges the same way the challenge of riding that gold fxr on this trip i'm doing it's not the most ideal in any kind of way but the challenge is fun yeah you know just like riding turbo across country but think about the think about this it's too. uh you have yeah. everybody telling yeah. you it can't be done and that's the fun part of it yeah so i, I have a deuce in my uh garage an 01 deuce and that bike was made by harley because of the like basically the orange cut co- like county chopper yeah uh, uh mm. like craze i like the deuce mm-hmm. i like the tail like that's well, well i think that back then like harley you know from what i understand from the all the podcasts i've done around this it's harley used to have a five-year turnover of if the, if the world's into this they have five years before they can produce something on the market it kind of fits the Jeez, bill. Jeez, it takes that long. I feel like, did. oh, no. So what it is now is that they were able to do a quick-to-market thing. So the Lowrider S, the original one, and the Dyna, that's a quick-to-market. They already have, they already had mm. 110 motors from the CVOs. They already had, you know, black paint. They already had, you know, they just had to add a couple of things so they didn't have to reinvent anything. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The same thing happened whenever they did the... Uh, um, the 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 street glide or the electric glide standard right you have this bike let's just take all the shit off that most people were probably going to be okay not having mm-hmm. no radio no rear pegs no fucking back seat no no mm-hmm. you know whatever like the vin vin number say f and c j yeah <laughs> and so the same thing happened like the the lowrider st was a new design mm. right the lowrider s soft tail wise was another quick to market thing that I think they would already they were already doing but you had the low rider S and the Dyna and then they come out with the soft tails but they don't come out with the low rider S for another year or two. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They had the inverted front end because it was that's on, like that, that's like what uh Jive S Honky has, right? Just a low rider. Just a low rider. So that's what uh, Big Will Cody. Yeah. Um James friends, he bought the That's what I started Sport Glide. On. Mm. So the Sport Glide, right. people have already forgot about that because that was a... The Sport Glide had an inverted front end or no? Yeah. It had an inverted front end. It had four controls. It made no fucking sense. It was a good start, but they had the wrong bones, right? Or it had the right bones. It had the wrong accessories or fucking clothes, however you want to fucking use that yeah. analogy. <laughs> but the bags were were popular. So you put them on the ST and all this, that, and the other. Mm. So I think now especially because motorcycles are more performance based it's not like they're trying to reshape the shape of a motorcycle they're just trying to make the parts you know better lightweight you know look a little different but not they're not changing the shape of the bike they're only making they're keeping the same shape but changing the finish changing the material yeah. changing the way it looks you yeah. know what i'm saying well and, and i've got a lot of history in the uh the the product development and marketing world but more on the product of that isn't highly customized mm-hmm. and i totally get what they're what they do here from the standpoint of like you basically only get to pick your color mm-hmm. and and that makes absolute sense because they know that the everyone is going to every single customer is going to do a, that's a, probably a lot of big a, revenue too. A, a drastically different thing with that bike so yeah. like you can't have all these different options with it yeah and like that's so much money for them too like that's a yeah. huge revenue gain Harley's like that's why they take you to the parts department as soon as you buy your your mm-hmm. bike oh well, well, yeah it like they don't have nearly the aftermarket or not aftermarket nearly the collections that they used to carry because back in the mm-hmm. day in like the, the twin cam era you can go in there and they had the dominance collection the affliction collection the ed hardy collection <laughs> yeah. so they had all those collections and you yeah. can just go through the fucking the accessory book and pick what you wanted to do well what's cr- what's crazy though they've kind of got back that to is that true. you wonder why they haven't uh tried to tap into that aftermarket I mean, well they kind of got back to that recently mm-hmm. but not from the factory so now they offer uh, uh basically a parts package yeah that is like yeah. you know to to a certain 
writing style, mm-hmm. you know, whether that's, um, you know, grips or mirrors or whatever, like they, they have, they, they, they do have those, uh, writing style packages now, but it's just not from the factory. Mm. It's through parts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Well, like I said, they're, they're doing stuff, but you know, just the visuals of it. It's like, if Harley is leaning into the chopper world, at least, they're leaning into it. They're supporting it. They're keeping it alive. Yeah. Uh, they're, you know, all the people, like half the people that have like any creative job at Harley are from that world. You know, they're. I never mm-hmm. thought about that. Yeah, that is true. They're not yeah. leaning into fucking, you know, yeah, they lean into like the, the YouTubers and stuff now for the content to make for. So, because they, they got to sell new bikes. But the thing is that like these old bikes, they, they, uh, you know, even even FXRs, even all this stuff, it, it it allows you to tap into something that feels a little different than the modern bike. And it's not to say it's better or worse; it's just different. It, and it feels like you're tapping into, you know, riding an FXR, riding a Evo FXR, even feels more badass, even though it's way more anxiety because you don't, you know, whatever could happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just feel like it it connects to the bike a little bit different. Oh. It takes a it, it makes you have to think about it a little bit more, you know? And yeah, that's why I think that the M8 FXR has gotten so popular because you're literally having something that's sexy as hell that, that does work well, looks good, and then you have literally Harley's best engine, like as far as like reliability, power, all that stuff right. in it, mm-hmm. you know? And it's retarded fast because of how much power those things make. And, and then you put a turbo on it's better. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not reliable. No, you know, uh, talking about like uh, your trip and stuff like that, cruising around. After meeting those guys at Bisbee, I do see the. Uh, so now knowing these guys that these young kids that I met, and they're like between twenty five to thirty five. You know, they're not or forty five, maybe even. They're not like. Uh, but <clears throat> they. I saw their bikes, but didn't meet them until we were headed home in the gas station. They slept on the ground in front of this bar mm-hmm. that we were eating dinner at and having drinks That's at. That's a level that I would, yeah. I would like to try. And then, and then now I know them. <clears throat> um, and like one of them is, uh, like, he works for the electric company, like on the, you know, the lineman or whatever. Yeah. So it's not like he's uh, broke. broke. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's just he. It's a, thrill. It's a way it, of it's life. Into that yeah. uh, lifestyle, and I think that's that's cool. If you can, I can't sleep on the ground like yeah, that. But yeah. but literally, there was this dirt piece of, in front of the bar, and they were happy as hell to uh, sleep right under their bikes, no tent or nothing, just yeah. yeah. And I was like, damn. Man. I've seen that a few times, like crossing yeah. the desert. Like I've seen, like. Guys like with a bike with like a chopper like sleeping on like an old. First of all, it's funny bench. to see like a twenty year old drinking like Pep's. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude, sorry. Do you know? You know, I don't know. You well, should be drinking her White Claw or something. I will say this so like, <laughs> what I do enjoy about like riding my bike right now, mm-hmm. y'all's bikes look beautiful and they're way faster and everything to it. Yours and, is plenty fast. <laughs> but they there's there's just something about like there's way less of what I have on the road. So I feel mm-hmm. I don't I, I, it, it sounds pretentious, but it, it, it feels unique. It feels like I'm doing something that not everybody else is doing. Like in a sense, even though Jake spikes to the nines and you know, Matt's is like he's like on the process of getting it to where he wants it to get, it's like way different levels. There's still the like the same bones going mm-hmm. on the road, mm-hmm. same shape. You know, and to me, it's like, I'm just, I, I really want to play with this idea of customizing bikes that have a different shape and I can control the shape. That's honestly why I really like your bike too, though. Like, because it's not just a plain old FXR. There's a, there's a good amount of customization to it too yeah. that I think makes it more unique, but you've lost what seems like zero the performance too, which is cool for us just being part of this the scene that we do where we hang out with mainly um which is awesome you know like i think it's really cool i'll tell you one funny what you said uh so this one guy i met a couple of times he lives like over there by 
Twisted Sisters mm -hmm. area, whatever that. Um, and during one part of the trip, when I posted, he goes, what is that? Like a, a Chopper FXR or something? And I, I don't know what I said. I was like, yeah, or something. And and then later on, that picture where you're standing up on the bike, right? Taking a picture. He's like, oh, is that why it's chop like <laughs> but it was funny to yeah. think like even this guy he doesn't hardly ever comment on my stuff but like he noticed this bike is different yeah you yeah. know what i mean yeah like but i and i and it, what you were talking about just made me think like he was like why is it like that mm -hmm. yeah like he just didn't understand it because he's got an ape hanger but it's you know even though like uh, most of us mm -hmm. can't get some of the tv show chopper shit out of our heads mm -hmm. you know like there's parts of it that needs to be forgotten and there's parts of it that was badass but there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people that born free today. There are a lot of people that are vendors that weren't around for that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, even though it's super familiar to me, my past, it's super familiar to other yeah. people. It's still, you know, like last night we were sitting at the bar. I, I can't remember if I was standing next to you or who, but I was like, you know, that dude right there used to be a, like a. Fucking, oh, it was me. Yeah, yeah. Russell Mitchell walks by. That yeah, and I remember be, Russell like from back in the day, the the shows and stuff. And I was like, his fucking, stuff was wild. He used to be a goddamn rock star in this world. Of this now he's walking around unseemly. Most of these people don't even know him. Yeah, yeah. You know, with his dog. <laughs> and so it's just kind of, you know, for someone like me who's I parked like, next to him at Chopper Fest, and I felt bad. Um, he parked right behind me. And, and everyone uh, see the turbo instead of you. No, a couple of people they were asking me, and I'm like, wow, man, you should go look at his. Hand controls. Yeah. This is what you should look at. Yeah. <laughs> Not my turbo. <laughs> but that's like... Fighting that, the buttons. So it, this is a very fucking primitive thought that I've been kind of thinking of on my silence in my, my uh, motorcycle on this trip. But I think a lot of the newer generation of people in bikes are attracted to the materialism of the motorcycles because that's mm. the, it's easy to obtain the materialism. Yeah. You can buy it, you can finance it, you can charge it, you can, you know, whatever you can do to get it, but it's a thing, right? You already see the thing over there, now you want the thing, as opposed to, like, there's another wave of, I want this thing that exists, it's in the light of that, but it, it's, it's its own thing once it's made. And that's a different kind of attraction. It's kind of like, you know, you want a boat. But do you want a custom boat? Is that really a thing? Are people gonna, they're not going to make a whole fucking custom hole for that. Mm -hmm. You're going to buy this modular home and you get to pick a couple options in it. How many? How big a motor? You so some turbos on it? I, yeah. I get it. And I liked it from... So I got to ride, I don't know what part of the FXR tour, and I got to ride next to these guys. And if I didn't, I wouldn't believe that they could go 100 miles an hour. But it, especially the one that stood out to me the most was bare knuckle bear knuckle paul or what's yeah his blue one and and if i didn't get to ride next to him going over 120 miles an hour i would have said fuck you there's no way that thing's going on yeah 20 miles mm. an hour yeah. but i fucking rode with him on the fucking uh uh i don't remember what bike i was on i think it was on this one without a turbo and i was like if i wouldn't have been there with him there's no yeah. way i would have right Believed I mean, it. There, but so not, it made me like, fuck, I would like to have one of those. Turbo. <laughs> yeah, turbo. <laughs> yeah. There's still like the aspect though, like I, I've been saying, like these baggers, like there was I like that ST that one of the um uh one of the Harley builders for the Born Free um did the ST, I forget his name, I was kind of following along, but they had like nice performance like doodads to it that I, I thought was like using the, the Screaming Eagle exhaust. Mm -hmm. And then I think he made it its own like headers for it and stuff like that. Do you, do you think you could blend something that we were just talking about together, get maybe some of the older nostalgic builders to do something with modern bikes with Harley? Well, you, I mean, that's kind of what we were talking about with Power Plant. He kind of did with his. It's, it's like you... You know, actually, the dude Joshua, the chrome bike, the the fast, oh, I love that bike, the chrome one that he made the tank and all this stuff. Yeah. He took a modern bike and tried to make it look bad, but the problem he made is, a breakout look good. It looks really so good I, though. That I bike was sick. I, I I was behind him at uh, Cook's Corner yesterday mm -hmm. and waiting in line to the porta potties, right? Yeah. And uh, what's the name of the shop that he's with? American Pedal Custom. Yeah. And. Uh, he was telling me, yeah, you know, they asked me to build this bike. Uh, 
And and so I'm kind of, you know, standing behind him, listening to talk to this other guy, and he tells me a breakout. I'm like, fuck, how are you going to make that look cool? <laughs> right? He did. Exactly. He I fucking I did. I thought the same thing. But yeah, he did a good job, man. Um, but there's like things to it to where it's like, you know, it, it, a, an M8 motor is too modern looking. Mm-hmm. You'd have to find a way, accessorize wise, ex, accessories way, like some kind of rocker boxes and covers to give it a little bit of a nostalgic look. The rocker C. Is that a, come on. Yeah. And I know you can do this in, in the, the scenario of, of Harley's, but I love the look of that new SNS 136. Mm. Yeah. Have you seen that? It's yeah. a cleaner looking engine, it looks like. Man, it, 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 it kind of resembles a mixture of an M8 and a. Uh, Morwich? Well, kind of, or, or like even a Nevo. Yeah. It's going to be a really like, sad day for you when I win that and you don't. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even you should fucking... try out, kid. <laughs> yeah, I should probably get in that so I can get me an M8 motor. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know it, but I mean, like I said, these bikes, like all this stuff, it, it's supposed to be a gateway drug. Whatever gets you into this, mm-hmm. right? you're supposed to, and, and you, and you're supposed to find joy in customizing and making yourself. And every time you do it again on something new, it's like a you're making it better. It's just a, mm-hmm. it's that learning, that's that that uh you know. Well, you see that today. Like I've talked to a bunch of people to just walking to see the average Joe's bike too, yeah. and like just ch- checking out those, looking at that, and like I go to my bike like three times to get like sunscreen or something like that, and like sometimes like dude, what do you like? Do you like this? Like do you, yeah. and that is the kind of really cool aspect of born free. Where I don't know. I mean, See, obviously, I've, but I've always one. used that as Instagram. I, I remember talk, uh, Steve Chamberlain said this on somebody's. I've always used. Now I know it's it's not for that, but I've always thought of Instagram as like a forum. I ask people, and now I've learned. Uh, You're a weirdo. Yeah, like <laughs> like, dude, you ask these guys questions and expect them to respond to you. But I thought that's how it was. Well, it, what it was like that at one point. Yeah, you know, I um, think that they're, they're right now it's like. Because of being, some things are being lost in translation, it comes off like you expect me to give you this information mm-hmm. because. Yeah, I know that from business world, the corporate well, I world. Mean, just like, so I, I, I tell everybody, people are like, oh, I didn't expect you to answer. I'm like, well, well then why'd you even ask me a question if you didn't expect me to answer? Mm-hmm. I, I said, but because uh, that's how I uh, met. A lot of the guys that I'm close to now is just by asking them stupid questions. Yeah, yeah. You know? That is cool. It, it is. I used to ask Kyle for I read all these questions before uh, anything. He bought my bike or I bought one of his. It was, uh, he would still answer me and I never even met him in person. Well, I mean, that that's actually a good point, man. Like, I don't, I feel like a lot of the questions that, that kind of come across the table here. Oh, I can't even imagine. The become like did. they happen at like bike nights and things like that. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with um, asking somebody a question through the internet about something that, that you're obviously more knowledgeable in or, or have experience on. Right. But I think it's the tone in which how people ask. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people can be very uh, mm. uh, lazy. Right. So to my, my, my thing is, you know, don't be lazy in the asking for something knowledge that you want to obtain you know what i mean mm-hmm. whether that's me talking about pain again or fuck that i'm just talking about in general how do you like that this that and the other it's like you know what bars are those like uh you know what i mean all that yeah. stuff that those has, bars are awesome what are they you yeah. know like changing the tone a little bit those le- yeah. extra sentence like how, how people well, and, ask and so question. maybe it was the maybe it was my tone was good but i've always had pretty good uh um with uh even i remember one time going drag racing on my street glide i this guy that i know does a lot of hardcore street drag racing in california i messaged him hey what do you recommend i put the tire pressure at you know i'm he may not fucking ever read the message but he did and fucking helped me i beat all these fuckers (laughs) what was it 20 pounds we'll start there (laughs) start there yeah well that's what i've always said it's like look i don't mind i'll I'll answer any questions and he could have been like on the shitter (laughs) <laughs> Whatever, dude. Fucking twenty pounds, dude. I don't give a shit. My bike you know, was trying. All to I know, but I I took it, you know. But I trusted this guy because he uh, races a lot of street racing. Yeah, um, drag street racing. So, but you have such a good personality for that. Like, I no, but I never met this guy in person. person. Yeah, but I mean, you have a good person. You no, talk. They to don't the, even know what I look like. Yeah, true. But you just talk <laughs> to anyone. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, that's my point. Is I'm saying I yeah. treated it like a forum, not yeah. not like for likes and shit. I'm not. He's not going to get any yeah. kind of credit for answering me. Yeah, he's not going to get any likes or a new. That's I'm cool. already following. I'm. I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying. Is I. So I. <clears throat> It is that. No, it, These it is guys that. were uh, talking around my bike today, right? And uh, they were like, uh, I don't know, they were saying a bunch of stuff because they know the previous owner of this bike. And and anyway, so I'm talking to them about it. And they were like, uh, do you know if Dwayne's around? I'm like, I'm fucking Dwayne. <laughs> oh, what's up, man? <laughs> uh, you do have this like knack of buying someone else's bike, and then it just like nobody even really knows or remembers yeah. who actually owned it before. It's right. just like, oh, that's Dwayne's bike. Yeah, that's because that never. No, happens. No, because they're like, well, no, I know, I follow you, but I don't know know what you look like. Mm -hmm. I that, thought you were just a dude a standing by it. Most most people when they like buy another bike, if it's been around a couple of years, like you're probably the only one that like now it's become Dwayne's bike over yeah. anyone. Oh, else. that's good. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, born free is like, it's, it's a, it's a mixture of a lot of cool things, but like I said, I, I like to get people's take on it. You know, uh, you obviously been coming for a while, but. I never come with you guys and you guys ride pretty good, man. It was a blast. Well, and two, so I guess another thing, like we kind of touched on it briefly, but like lane splitting was, uh, <clears throat> something new for Matt and I, but legally, mm -hmm. but like, we do a lot of shoulders in Dallas since if you're going to be yeah, illegal, but, make but it like easy. you were mentioning how you like you would normally get like exhausted and mm -hmm. all of that, which we haven't done. Yeah, we haven't done. Uh, I guess it's because of the way we took. Um, yeah. Normally, I'm as soon as I get in California, I start, mm -hmm. and that was like way yeah. before Palm Springs. So it's a different way. Yeah, it's uh, no, we just didn't. We were on the, or maybe at the time that we were on the freeway, I don't know. We actually didn't cut it's much like off 50 from 50 miles straight friends. of that, and it's like dead. And maybe right. we'll, maybe I don't want to speak too soon. But we'll, maybe we'll <laughs> right. see that tomorrow. Yeah. And you'll be like, fuck this. Yeah. Because uh, we didn't cut that much off from Paul Springs. I don't, I don't smoke maybe weed, but there's sometimes I'm 50. like, dude, this would be the time. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. I'm, I'm, uh, well, the I'm hard tense. Right. Like, like what we went down to Laguna Beach, like trying to go through that one lane canyon that mm. you just can't get around those cars. But, um, no, true, you know, the, it, the highways are all congested, the, the, the lights are all ran back. It's just, and then sometimes, like, I just like today, like, we a couple times we just got behind the cars, like, I don't feel like trying to get to the front right now. Yeah, you know, well, I, I think it. traffic right. on the way home, well, things were moving pretty slow, pretty, it was flowing pretty good, but. It is. I I have noticed. I've since I've done it on a soft tail and a rogue light. It is totally different. Mm -hmm. But what I haven't experienced this trip that I have the last two times is where. And maybe it's because I haven't even been on the one hundred and one, or I mean the. Uh, uh, we've only we've been on like the five, the four, not the not even not the four or five. I mean, yeah, the four or five. No, yeah, we see, we're that's, that's south, the one that, that's north, and right. I think that's what we'll have to go tomorrow. Yeah. So when you get on that, yeah. just be ready to. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, we won't even. It's fucking. Intense. I don't think we. I don't think we need to hit the four hundred five to go home. It's intense, man. No, we're talking about when we go to the fucking. Oh. Oh, when you guys go oh, north, okay. yeah, my bad. Not at I ten. Not. You don't. Have, you don't have to get on the four hundred five to go to I ten. No. So. It's intense, man. Yeah. But it's a blast. But. <laughs> You don't want to do it after uh, drinking all night, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just like doing 89 a. Yeah, you need all of your senses, man. <laughs> I feel like a uh, NASC Formula One driver, you know, where they do the uh, uh, senses. Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, it's, it's just been fun, man. It's been, for me, it's been a great experience doing this with somebody else other than like, not in a bad way, but just doing it with new people. Like yeah. getting mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. some first for some other people. Um, and then making some actual first for myself as well. Like, you know, doing yep. Sedona, um, I've been to Havasu, but never stayed like, well, I have stayed, but just doing it like this. You yeah. Know? <clears throat> maybe, uh, maybe some of these other guys are making it cool to, uh, maybe next year I'll fly in. <laughs> I this guy. I'm thinking maybe next year I'll fly in, man. Yeah, I got to give a big shout out to Chuck and Z for that dinner. Uh, that oh, day. man. Oh, yeah, that was shit. awesome. Huge fly in. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's, 
No, but a, a lot of guys I know flew in today, and I'm like, all right, maybe that's all I'm going to do next year, man. Yeah, I don't know. Waiting in that line to get in for two hours that's if you're driving a car. Yeah. Dude, to be in California not on a bike is hard. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. I've and driven I, I, this area many times in a car, and it's growing up here and coming back here for a work back in the day, and it's like a bike. It's a game changer. I was like, I don't know if I, I thought about that on the ride home. I was like, I don't know if I'd ever want to ride a, drive a car out here. Yeah. And like I said, I was up here in January, you know. And, and what did you think of when we we're on the freeway? And, and what I love about being in LA on the, mm-hmm. or California on the freeways is when I get to get in touch with some locals and piggyback yeah. behind them, like when yeah. we we're behind that diner. Yeah. Is, did you, you notice the difference? Yeah. Huh? You see him wobble? Uh. Uh-huh. Yeah. He got the diner or the street life? The diner. He got a fucking little wobble a little bit. Oh, he did? Well, yeah, he was so probably was saw your bike too. and was like, fuck, I better. How fast were you going right there? Um, I don't remember. Um, Mine was kind of topped out. But right I know. There. I know. What was this? I, we were on our way down to Laguna. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had we had some like Dyna and a like, street glide or something. Street yeah, glide. but you can tell when the locals are there and they, uh, uh, that's what is a blast. When you're through the traffic, if we experience it. When I see some locals coming through, I'm like, you know what? Uh, let me let them go because, dude, that's it's we'll, like we'll uh, cut the path way better. Yeah, they they. Uh, yeah. It's awesome to follow them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they kind of came up on us and they passed us. I you know I don't have any mirrors, so I just thought it was one of y'all. When they did, yeah, they waited. It was nothing like. No, they're cool. Yeah, yeah cool. But they started kind of getting it. I'm like, well, I could like chase people. Yeah, so like, <laughs> you know, I could get it too. I want to see what it do. No, and that's what I that's what I love about all the California guys is they they even told us like, hey, slow down. It's it's and yeah. sure enough, it went into I one like lane. They had a better better route. We should probably yeah, should we probably should have followed yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean though. Is when you when you fought when I see these uh, um, sometime last time I was here on the green bike, I was like, you know, last time I was on the soft tail too. But the time before that, I was on the green bike, and I'm like. Uh, this thing's pretty fast, but there's a difference between riding behind some locals. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they. Uh, mm. I think they see our plates, and I don't know that to some degree these some of these guys are fucking just gnarly on those highways. But it's kind of like sport bike riders. It's right? like seat, ev- it's seat time, bro. Not every can sport bike rider can fucking to this day go crazy. To this day, the fastest I think I am is on my street bike, mm. and I haven't had that shit in. Three, five years, something. I don't know. And it's just because of the seat time I had on. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been a good trip so far, like I said, guys. And, uh, really good. you know, I'm, uh, I'm glad you guys came to do it. No, thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you letting us be part of your journey on this <clears throat> long 10 plus weeks. Not 10, it's like eight. Is like, it eight? Okay. Yeah. Mm. But I'm excited to see where that goes to be really honest. Yeah. Like I, I'm trying not to like I feel for you, man, to try to hope it's as fun as it has been this week. It'll it'll be fun. Like it'll be fun. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> right. I don't want it to do with you anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can have seafood on unapologetically. Oh, right. Stopping at every sushi spot. No, it's just it, it'll be fun. It, it's I'm looking forward to the challenge and the things yeah. I want to try to create. But it, I think the hard part, the anxiety is like I feel like I should become what I'm like weirded out because that wall has one fucking. I know on it. it, it <laughs> I'm not. I can't even look at it because <laughs> it's so fucking. And serious. I'm not even an OCD person, but I noticed yeah. that when I was here the first day. It's a good and it already bothered me. I gotta think of it makes all. no goddamn sense, and I need to take a picture so people know what we're talking about. <laughs> gotta put that wide angle on. The so right so. bed is where all the magic happens, not the left one. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> knocked all the paintings good. off. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I appreciate you guys coming on, all the help and uh, you know, the friendship and things like that. So for sure. Um, hopefully, you know, this will be hopefully like what I like to see from guys like new guys getting out on the road is like get the gears turning about like Oh yeah. It has for you me. know, figuring out new things to do, new ways mm-hmm. to go about these these trips, like however whoever's going to Sturgis in the group, like how y'all plan to get up there and what y'all end up doing on that that journey, you know? Exactly. So, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, man. I guess Jake still is going to always be the one that keeps everybody because uh, <laughs> he was the one that was like, "Yeah, we're going up this time. You should, uh, you should join us." And I'm like, "Well, we'll see." I, 
I'm not sure if I can take that time off. Yeah, but. and and honestly, man, like that was a big help too, because like, you know, like I I guess I I get in my little bubbles and I and I kind of focus on the things I have to focus on, and I just you know I'm not even thinking about I didn't even know some of the people that were coming to Born Free were even coming. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like Cano and stuff like that. I didn't know about that. You know, I, I would say that's one thing. Like from my perspective, I I generally try to like bring people together as yeah. much as I can. Mm-hmm. Um. And I like want to get people together, but I don't want to hold their hand. I want to just right. like, yeah, hey, right. uh, we're doing this. You're welcome to come, and then that's right. all I got. Yep, you know. Yep, and, and there's there's certainly a limit to that too, as far as, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you certainly don't want, you know, twenty five people on this. Like, not not to say that we couldn't find a twenty five amazing people to be on this, but oh, like, yeah, yeah. it just becomes a yeah. Just imagine scheduling dinner and this and that, you know? right? Or oh, hotels yeah. like tonight, and shit. trying to get a six person table. Here. Yeah, exactly. So like that type of shit. Like, and if anybody else is slower than fucking Dwayne at putting his goddamn gloves and his goddamn, <laughs> <laughs> we're at the street ready to this go. Guy, <laughs> man, he's already in the one for six club. Once we don't fucking walk around with my helmet on and shit. <laughs> Usually it's at the they would have fired me as a prospect. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my fucking glass cleaner. D Wayne. D Wayne. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. I'm, why do you think I ride by myself, dude? Everybody kicks me out. <laughs> you have imaginary too fast friends, though. <laughs> takes too long, it stops. He's like. <laughs> You don't even want to be on the bike. You just want to haul ass and get to the yeah, side. Yeah, I just want to haul take ass. Take all the shit off. I live my life. What was that line from uh, Fast and Furious? I live my life a quarter mile at a time. I live my life a hundred guest every hundred twenty miles. Start a guest. Stop. I edit it. <laughs> I live my life a hundred twenty miles at a time. <laughs> oh, it edits with loves. I'm you know you know if you put my phone number at the Loves gas station, you can get 10, 10 cents off. I swear to God. <laughs> you created a Loves account? <laughs> no, I do. I, 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 I will. I actually saw it. And for if you a, go to Circle K? Hey, I saw it for a good time. <laughs> no, no, that might be true. But at Circle K, you get like six cents if you put my phone number in there. So. I'm serious. That's how far it. That's how much you do. That's how you I, do that. Huh? That's how you get back. No, that's because uh, I said, you know what? I better uh, start getting on some of these reward programs. <laughs> fucking 91 Octane. I, I just found out about the whole like having your credit cards and debit card stuff where they have like uh, like rewards to get like different points right. for shit. Oh, yeah. I don't know about points, cash but back. I want 10 cents off is what I want. <laughs> yeah, you need to find when one we with stopped cash in, back uh, for gas. Some, it, was when, it was when I filled up your tank. Yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck, $7? It was seven dollars. Oh yeah, I, I, obviously. I didn't yeah, I was it. like that one wrong, gas station, wrong in, gas station in Arizona. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I was fucking. Well, you were, <laughs> he was like the car's not working. I said, here, dude, get. You were just gonna mine. spray it on the ground for two gallons anyway. <laughs> seven dollars a gallon. It was. It was where that dead snake was. Where was that? Oh, uh, it was there. Or it was yeah. the seven dollars one was when we crossed over into California. No, I that one was like no. five or four. No, it was this, it was the one right after that. It was uh yeah, it was it was for uh ninety one octane. It was like seven. Don't tell you that's the first time. That's the no, first it was it was the, it was I, no. I'm sorry, it was the one. Um, it was not one of the snake. It was ones? the dead snake one. Yes, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. that wasn't seven dollars. The the the, the poison snake. One, it was seven dollars. Snake. You're putting eight because I came in. That. I was like, do you see like, that gas price? Yeah. <laughs> like, bro. Yeah, it was it was. I don't know. But it was still a blast, man. I had a blast. Oh, I had the but best I, time. I probably only filled up like two and a half gallons. So no, I wouldn't. It wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, would have exactly. poured out two, that? so it was only 0. 0.8 extra. Yeah. Right? yeah. Mm. All right, guys. So I Good appreciate times. it. Thank you. Appreciate um, you letting us go on your I, journey. I yeah. let shit. Y'all, y'all, this was this was meant to happen. So, you know for what I'm sure. saying? It, I appreciate it. And, uh, Thank you, Matt, for, I don't know if you figured out your points yet or if they're just gone and you had to donate them to all of us or yeah, how that we'll works. We'll find out. We'll figure <laughs> it out. That's good, yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you. No worries. I'm sleepy as fuck. Yeah, exactly. I'm sleepy. Yeah, it's a fame Curl up with the uh, Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank the homies for accompanying me on this journey out to California to kick off this very large 
an aggressive trip I'm trying to make. If you guys haven't heard about it, we have been doing podcasts on our Patreon called The Garage Talk, where you can find out all about the journey that I am currently on, as well as other podcasts with a lot of cool people you've heard of and seen before on the podcast. Born Freeze Over, I'm in the backyard of my lovely wife's aunt's house in Venice, California. That's the background noise you were hearing while I record this outro and uh, getting ready to start doing some podcasts down here in Southern California before I make my way to NorCal. Check out the links down below for our sponsors, our Patreon, and we'll catch you on the next one.